Well, it says, what will happen to Morning Drive on Zeta 4 now, question mark, by Lourdes Acevedo. Uh-huh. And she says, now that Neil Rogers has moved from Zeta 4 to WIOD, the question arises, who will move into Rogers' former slot? Right. And then there's some information in here which to me is just staggering. It says, <laughs> Dave Caprita has been hosting the show with John Ford and Ron Harrison. Ron Harrison. Wow. What the hell is that all about? What is Harrison? Huh? He was there this morning. Doing what? what? Yes. Doing what? Well, you know, just commenting, you know. Commenting? Yeah. And then it says, when asked if this was the permanent lineup, Zeta General Manager Tim Williams preferred to focus on the on-air presentation uh -huh. and said only that the station... Now, listen to this very carefully, because I want you to analyze it afterward. Right. And said only that the station is aiming for a cross between album-oriented rock and an oldie sound. Now, what the hell does that mean? I don't understand. I thought they were classic rock. Right. And then it says a possible candidate for the job vacated by his old nemesis would be former WSHE morning host Joey Reynolds, who's remained in South Florida since he was released from She last spring and has made no secret of the fact he's here to stay. Rogers consistently beat Reynolds handily in the ratings when they were competing head-to-head -head for almost a year. Reynolds has made several guest appearances outside the market. Most recently, been working on a new nationally syndicated comedy game show with Morton Downey Jr.'s production company. Reynolds and Downey were roommates 25 years ago in Syracuse. Right. And Reynolds credits Downey with starting his career in broadcasting. <laughs> so it's not just <laughs> his warts that we have Don't to blame Downey huh? for now. It's Joey that we have to saddle him with, too, okay? But well, didn't, well, didn't you say he was out on the West Coast somewhere in Tampa? Uh, that was oh. just a rumor. I don't know. It's just a lot, lot of rumors. Place. Yeah. 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 I want to ask you a question. You know that edition of Spy Magazine? That yeah. You're uh -huh. about? Which edition is it? Is it October or November? Oh, God, you got me. Know. You got me. Because I went to the newsstand. I saw November. Nothing. Nothing about what you were talking about. Well, maybe it was October. Like That's a good magazine, by yeah, the way. You ought to go subscribe to it. That's got some neat stuff in there. Yes, uh, the, the article you were talking about, I really want to get that. Okay. Okay. You have a good one now. You too. Bye-bye. Okay, we're off to a really flying start here this morning. Thank God. No, really, when I sat down, I thought, boy, there we go. The honeymoon is over. It's like these people are really turning stiff fast on us. And, of course, <laughs> anybody who turns stiff fast in this town, it's like a miracle. <laughs> um, no, I was just reminded that because I saw Claude Pepper on the news last night. <laughs> what was he talking well, my about? Friend, I think Claude Pepper is like the epitome of this state, isn't he? He's like everything that's wrong with Florida. You look at Claude and you see it right there, spinning before your eyes. By the way, speaking of... What? The mobile caller in Kendall, is he on the bat line? No. He's not on the bat. He's going to be on the bat gonna line. He's going to be on the bat if line. We if we wait till Sukkot, <laughs> he'll be on the bat line, okay? He's probably in church now praying, and if you had a show like his... Okay, let's take this mobile phone in Kendall. Hello? Yeah, I'm going to wait until Tissue Buzz. Okay, or Shavuos is coming, too, in June. Well, I like Tissue Buzz better. Hello, Neely. This is Mendel from Kendall. Mendel, how you doing, Mendel? Well, I've got a bit Mendel's of news Mendel's getting a little chronic, you. you notice that? Yeah. yeah. What's that? I said you're a great caller, Mendel. <laughs> I almost wanted to talk to you like this after that pizza commercial. Uh -huh. You know, I saw a billboard on North Kendall in 117th that said Harvey from Kendall is back. Yeah. <laughs> on I the Sandy well. Payton show, yeah. Well, what can I say? You know, there's only one thing worse about the elections being over and all the campaign ads that we saw on TV. All the holiday ads are going to follow now, Neil. I don't want to rub it the salt in the wounds, but it's just coincidental that after uh, Howard Kleinberg wrote that editorial praising Harvey from Kendall, the Miami News is going out of business. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I don't know where this guy hides himself, but I'm looking under all the big rocks. Well, I understand it. He's probably going to be down there at the depot tonight uh, with me and Steve and Tom Jicka and uh, uh -huh. the bird. Yeah. Well, I know. And we can't a... wait to have him for dinner. He makes salads, I understand. That's what they say at the Santa Maria house, too. <laughs> I would be very careful with the salad dressing. Okay, Mendel, listen, have a wonderful life, but you're uh, giving me Ajita already, okay, with a phony accent. Let's go to Palm Beach. Hello. Before you even get to the memo. Man, they got more people working in this building. It's incredible. Looks like Macy's parking lot. Okay, now, anyway, you were listening Saturday. You were monitoring the Ernie Sochin show. I heard part of it. Oh, Ernie, you're so wonderful. And all these old farts were calling in. All, right? our, all the chronics that Ernie doesn't know uh -huh. the voices. Uh huh. Now, when he was on at night, he was so intelligent. And now all he does is sit there with that moron who laughs at everything. And it's so grating on my nerves. Oh, so why the God. hell are they listening? Yeah. Don't they have something word. important to do, like mix their lunchtime Metamucil or something at this hour? <laughs> Wouldn't you think they'd be doing that, getting it ready? <laughs> well, it was great. Lourdes did know who you were. Now, who the hell is Lourdes? She's the one, the, the young radio lady that writer. writes for the Herald. You talked to her one time, yeah, she said. a couple of times. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the other major thing to announce is uh, on Friday, my horse came in. Did you see? No. Lady Whiskers. Ladies Whiskers. Uh, I saw it on TV on the what Calder about Show. Three twenty. I don't know, but it it. I saw the race on TV, and uh, not only did that horse win, I mean it was a strong, strong win, and I was all excited. The only question was, why didn't I go out there and plunge on you know, this, this thing? man? Really it's believe that he can look in the newspaper and pick names out of the paper. It happened again. Go out to the track. The day that you go out there and you start putting your money where your brain is, yeah. you're going to plunge your guts out, okay? Mm -hmm. And you're going to be whining. You'll come out of here and whine, <laughs> just like these people say. In fact, maybe your cackling will turn to whining. It was, please some of these it was my, I had a strong feeling on that one. It jumped out at me out of the paper. Yeah. It did. And how and, about, what did I pick? Uh, Instant Robbie. I didn't hear anything. Oh about no! Ensign it. Robbie came in uh, second. Yeah, I saw oh, that did on the chart Saturday. Yeah. I saw Big Stanley won yesterday. So that's not bad. We had a first and a second again mm -hmm. on Friday. And uh, anyone should bet on uh, Big Stanley just uh, just because of the name. Exactly. He's a little under the weather, by the way. <laughs> Is he? We, we hope, hope he recovers he could, very yes, soon. We do. Ten seventeen at WIOD. WIOD. We're uh, way over the quota for this hour. Oh, we can good. knock it off now. Good. Okay. I'm ready for my hate letter now. We can knock it off because one thing I'm not going to do, and I don't want to get anybody upset. I'm not going to... I just have a thing. I've been doing talk for a long time. Oh. I don't like when I punch mm -hmm. up the call. I don't like saying, hi, you're on WIOD. Right. I, it just sounds so contrived. You know, it sounds so fake. Mm -hmm. And it is fake. You know, like when you see somebody at the mall, hey, Joe, you're on WIOD. You don't <laughs> say that. <laughs> so we'll do it another way. We'll just sneak them in there yeah, another way. Okay? We'll accomplish it a different way. I mean, way. by the time you get listening through listening to this show every day, you'll be so positive of what station you've been listening to, <laughs> it'll be like emblazoned on your butt, okay? There'll be call letters, two call letters on each cheek. <laughs> That's how positive you'll be. You won't even be able to sit down for a month when you get through listening to this show. Okay, now here we go. All Program right. director, WIND, uh, this is November 7th, okay? Now, isn't mm -hmm. that the day that we started? Yes, it is. A week ago today. That's right. Dear sir... Boy, they sure didn't waste any time, did they? <laughs> Dear sir, needless to say, I was tickled to death when I heard that Neil Rogers was coming to IOD daytime. But uh -huh. I didn't spell D-I-D apostrophe E-N-T. <laughs> I didn't know that his show was going to be co-hosted by Glenn Hill. Contrived or real, I see no reason for Mr. Hill on radio. Mm -hmm. Frankly, his voice makes my skin crawl. Oh, good. In capital letters, skin crawl. <laughs> I listened to Neil on Zeta for about the first three months and then tuned back to 102 FM. Yeah. Oh, magic? Is that mm -hmm. what that is? Mm -hmm. uh, I hit the Zeta button on my car radio every morning, but only listened when Hill was absent, which had to be very infrequently, I guess, huh? Gee. I really don't know what it is Hill does. Opinions are like noses, I guess, and I really don't figure you're going to take the gas pipe because of mine, but <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to do the same thing with WIOD that I did with Zeta. Tune in, and if Hill comes on, change station, sign JB in Coral Springs. See you later. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me, I was listening uh, quite a bit coming to work this morning to Dave and John over on our, the uh, Weasels on our former station. Mm -hmm. And there are some of the people who call in who go through this. Of course, there are butt lickers everywhere. Mm -hmm. Put anybody on the air, you'll immediately have a little group of butt lickers. And they're going through this thing about, well, uh, we didn't like Neil because he didn't play enough music. <laughs> well, they're not playing any more music now than we did. They're playing about two, maybe three records an hour. They're, and they're rambling on and on, and the music is banging away in the background. Mm -hmm. And it sounded better today than it did last week, I'll be honest with you. But um, it's not a music show. I noticed. And the one guy was saying, well, gee, I used to have to turn off. I love the rest of the station. And I guess the logic is, I was thinking about that very deeply, okay? So in other words, they're going to trade the 5-4 for about a 1-3. Mm -hmm. So all the people, but at least they'll be consistent. They won't have to change their dials. Yeah. And it can be consistent all through the day. Yeah, it won't have that big bulge at one day I'm part. surprised you're not as surly as I thought you'd be when I read the letter. I thought you'd be apathetic. Not after listening. So sensitive and well, thin-skinned. In the early days, emotional. I used to get upset and apoplectic for like five to ten minutes. Yeah. Today, after being with you for all these years... Five or ten seconds. <laughs> well, years. two years. <laughs> oh, that's all these oh, years, boy. isn't Talk it? Talk about corny and Five emotional. or ten seconds. It's 1020 on WIOD, and if you're going to fix up the home for the holidays and get all that mung, maybe your floor kind of looks like an elevator in one of those Bahamian hotels. I don't want to wow. get too graphic, but... 610. WIOD.
It's 1024 at WIOD. Now, you're getting into bad habits already. We've only been here on a week, and you're starting to listen to radio again. I should know. Don't you understand that listening around on AM radio is one of the worst things that you can do to yourself? You're going to be depressed and surly. Well, I laughed, but all the things that made me laugh were unintentional. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me take the mobile call first here, because I can't. when I see mobile on there, I can't restrict, restrain myself. Hello. Hello there. How are you doing today? Okay. Uh, my name is Jeff. Uh, I own the Pizza Loft restaurant. Yeah, Jeff. I never. And got you're looking to... for a free uh, plug here, is that it, Jeff? Well, no. I'm looking for your opinion on these restaurant reviewers. My beef is I've had my place 13 years. Yep. Never been reviewed by anyone other than my customers who are still coming back. I know. Now wait a minute. Are you the guy that you're on Flagler? Right. Oh yeah, upstairs there. Right. That's yeah, a good place. Right, and I have great food and been there forever, and that is I can't correct. get anyone to come in there and review it. I don't know if they're too lazy to climb the stairs or what the story is. Now, let me ask you a question, Jeff. Are you doing good business there? Great. Don't invite anybody to come and review it. It could be the kiss of death. Well, I don't know what they could find wrong. They're, don't you understand? Their taste is in their earlobe. I mean, in this town, you've got some of the worst restaurant reviewers in the history of mankind. I don't want to mention any particular names, but, man, there are some of these people... Who, who like shill for certain restaurants. I don't want to mention the Forge well, the one or, that or the I Beach that... or the Rascal House. <laughs> <laughs> the one that I thought was the worst has retired, thank God. Really? Uh-huh. Who was that? Linda Sistra. Oh, she retired? Right. There's someone else doing her What do you mean she job? retired? She's like 20 years old, for crying out loud. Well, I she guess retired. she decided to have babies. But okay. anyway, this is the first time I've been able to call you because by the time I close my restaurant and get home and get to sleep, you're probably were just getting up for your old show. Yeah. So now I'm on my way to work to open up and uh No, keep it keep it quiet, Jeff. Don't uh, don't let any of them in there. In fact, if they come to your door, kick them out. Right. Well, I was hoping you guys would come down and join me to eat one night. We'll be there. And I've been there many times. It's an excellent place. Right. I'm not just saying that because you called because we've talked about it before. I, I, that's another reason I wanted to call to thank you because a number of my friends have told me, you know, why don't you take something to Neil or... Give him a call, and I'm always sleeping at that time. Yeah, why I, don't you know. bring something to Neil, by the way? Uh, we're, well, you're down on downtown now, right? No. And you're on Flagler Street. We're on 79th Street this on the Causeway. This is up 836. I'll be there. Okay. What's today? Yeah. Today's Monday, right? Yeah. Okay, what day is good for you this week? Any day you like. Not Any tomorrow. Day. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Wednesday would be great. Okay, and they'll let me in with no problem? Just tell them I hey, got Hey, I got news for you. for you. Listen, if you got food on you, they'll let you in this place <laughs> real quick, okay? <laughs> All right, you got it. I'll they'll roll out the carpet. The Okay, Jeff, thanks a lot. I'll be there before the end of the week. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye later. Okay. Anyway, what the hell did that have to do with anything? But he was mobile, and I wanted to get him on, and he's got a good place. Mm -hmm. And he's right. The restaurant critics in this town stink the place out. They really suck. Okay? Remember when those little guides came out a couple of weeks ago in the Herald? Oh, God. And we had a whole show on that thing? Oh, yeah. And they left out great, like Ruth Chris Steakhouse. They leave out of there, which is one of the premier steakhouses in this area. And then they put in places that I wouldn't send a chihuahua to, That's okay? right. That's right. Weird. All right. Anyway, you made a comment, and it's long overdue. And I guess I'm going to let it out now, okay? I've been holding back for a long time. But I think that it's... Well, I haven't been holding it back, but I just haven't laid it all out together. Mm -hmm. For years in this town, I worked from 8 to midnight, which is really not a good shift. People no. used to convince me that that was like prime time, like ah! on TV. In this market, it's graveyard time. Yeah. Because mostly what you're talking to is a bunch of geriatric old farts who have nothing else to do, are bored to tears, and you're like a babysitter. Exactly. And I never looked upon that until I got out of that godforsaken shift and went on during the daytime when living and breathing people are awake. Right. If I can steal that line from Dave, who used it this morning on Zeta, living and breathing. Swear to God. I swear to God. Yeah, they're using all my lines over there now. Unbelievable. And if they want, if they want to pay by the word, just put the check in the mail. <laughs> So anyway, I would sit and read U.S. News and World Report and Newsweek and Time and The Nation and this and that. I must have had like a dozen publications, the Washington Post Weekly, the New York Times I had delivered to my house, which cost like a fortune yeah. to get home delivery on the Times. And I would do all this preparation. If I had an author on a show, I would read the entire book. Wow. Okay? And most of those authors, for some reason, that send in the books, they're like six, seven hundred. They're like war and peace on a mm -hmm. bad day. Mm-hmm. And I would go through that whole damn rigmarole. I'd come on, do a great interview. We'd have a wonderful... And the calls would always, not usually, but always be like the Feldin lady, okay? I mean, I bring this doctor on who's had a cocaine addiction problem, who's lost his family, lost his practice, nearly lost his life over cocaine. He goes through this long, 
gut-wrenching personal story trying to warn people about the dangers and the addictiveness of cocaine. And we go through the whole song and a dance and about the miraculous comeback he made in his personal life and his practice. And the first call is this old bitch. Hello, that <laughs> I'm taking Feldine. What can you tell me about Feldine? And that's this town, man. Yeah. That's this town. Too many. I mean, you go to Los Angeles, you'll find old people. You go to New York, Chicago, anywhere. But they're not all jammed in these huge numbers into, like, there's no Century Village in L.A., mm -hmm. okay? There's Century City, but yeah. there's no Century Village. Or in New York. Or in Boston. You don't have these massive, massive numbers of geriatric old farts who've turned this community into God's waiting room. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. And they keep telling us, hey, the beach is coming back, man. The beach is a, the beach is a nightmare, okay? The beach is a toilet. It looks like Calcutta on a bad day. Wow. And that doesn't even speak for Sunrise and Tamarack and Hallandale and oh. all the other wonderful geriatric waiting rooms we got in this town, okay? And every one of them drives. Yeah, and every single one of them drives a big battleship in the middle of the road, okay? <laughs> With their head barely peeking up <laughs> over the steering wheel. Over the bottom of the steering wheel. <laughs> And that's the problem with this town. They want all the young people out of this town. And the thing that amazes me is how docile, how easily the people here just roll over and play dead, man. They don't, don't want us here? Fine. We'll go away. Like all the spring breakers. Mm -hmm. Now, why should that beautiful Fort Lauderdale Beach be sitting there? I'm not going to say it's empty. But why should it be devoid of life? Because we've got a bunch of stupid old farts who don't want young people here. Mm-hmm. They don't like to see people having fun. Ha good time is outlawed time. in this town, man. They if you hear, have a good time, you're probably going to spend 10 to 20. They hear someone on the radio laughing. Yeah, that's they, why they hate your guts. They hate, they hate you like poison, that's right, okay? because I'm having because a good time. Because you're having a good time, and that laughter just it turns their insides out, man. It twists their kishkis inside out. They said that on Ernie's show Saturday morning. Some yeah. of them said exactly that. Well, Ernie's got it. You see, there's a revolution here on WIOD that they didn't realize it started a week ago today. And when we did the show on Friday, and we yeah. had all those students calling in, and it lasted. We were ready to give up at 1025. It lasted almost the entire show. Phones were solid. We had, I'd say, 90 to 95% of the people who called were students, 17, 18, Absolutely. 15, 20, whatever the hell they were. They were great. No question. And this business of having these geriatric old farts who take over AM radio in this town, that was what was wrong with it in the first place. Mm-hmm. And two years ago, we took a station, we kind of revolutionized it. Of course, they put it right back to where it was and then some. <laughs> but uh, that's their problem, you know? Mm hmm. Thank God. I mean, that all problem. news format, that, that demographic over there is like 100 plus. Yeah, that's what they want. In order to listen to W, I, and Z, you've got to have your teeth in a glass. <laughs> no, seriously, you have to have a glass of Polydent. <laughs> or they won't let you listen to that radio station. That's a true story. I guess that's common knowledge. Yeah. So anyway, I didn't mean to get all emotional about That's it there, okay. but you just uh, hit it off. And these people think they own everything. They think that this this station, any station that's got talk shows on it is theirs, and they're going to call in. And like I started to say before I got emotional and interrupted myself, you do all these great things, and you talk about things that really matter, and you try to change people's minds and influence, and it doesn't mean a goddamn thing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Does it? Nothing. I said a goddamn thing. I kind of slipped on it there because I'm used to... You know, censoring myself from the other station. Mm -hmm. But Portland, Maine doesn't uh, run this station. Okay. So when they would call up, the old farts would call up Saturday morning. All they talked about, when he was on 8 to yeah. 12. When I used to be their babysitter. Over and over Go again. Go get a life, will you? It's a beautiful day, man. It's fantastic. It's going to be in the low 80s. The sun is shining. There's a nice breeze out there. It's perfect. Go out and take a brisk walk. And leave us alone. Get your heart pumping so you know you're still alive, you <laughs> miserable old farts. <laughs> It's true. And why the hell don't the people in this town have the guts to say it, to tell it like it is? He's Take so... a beautiful area like this. Now, like you go to, you notice Mike Disney just came back from Hawaii. Yeah. And Sonny was talking about going to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I've been to Hawaii three times, twice this past summer. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. Similar climate, not as humid. They got the breezes out there, the trade winds, but, but similar climate. But the, the mentality difference is incredible. People are having a great time. Wow. And they're all these young, living and breathing people. Oh, my God. And they got old people over there, but they're not all, like, spread out in the middle of, in, in chairs out in the middle of the street like a nursing home. Yeah, but, like, they can't walk out on the beach with a cup of something in their hand, can they? No. <laughs> Unless it's papaya juice. <laughs> of course they can walk across the street. They can, they can have bumper stickers. They can do any goddamn thing they want, okay? Wow. 
incredible. Just like this ball game tonight, you know, that they can't sell out in Joe Robbie Stadium. God builds a... And I'm not here to shield for Joe Robbie by any stretch of the imagination, because I still got plenty of problems with Joe. But the guy puts his neck out on a limb in a godforsaken town that never filled the Orange Bowl to begin with most of the time, builds this beautiful, incredible stadium, state-of-the-art scoreboard, everything you'd ever want, and they still have a million excuses why they don't want They can't park. They can't do this. This town is the, the town of excuses. That's what this town is. So maybe that ought to be our topic. What's your excuse? <laughs> now, we don't have... That's another thing, okay? Topics. I'm not going to go back to wasting my time trying to change the world and having a stroke talking to these old geriatric farts who get their, get their jollies by listening to these contrived debates and all this crap. I'm not going to do that again. We're having a good time, and that's what it's all about, and that's what ticks them off. That's it. You that's what it. bothers them. Nail oh, he's so brilliant. That's got yeah. nothing to do with it. You just don't like the fact that we're having a good time instead of sitting here with indigestion for four hours, tearing your kishkis out, trying to get a point across to a bunch of brain-dead morons. He's so intelligent, Ernie, and he's just wasting it with that moron. Boy, we're just... going to get Ernie in here one day, okay? <laughs> good. Really straighten his butt out. <laughs> uh, Henry Barrow's got a WIOD news update, and we'll come right back. It's 1035. We've had several of them lit, and now they're dropping off because they assume we're not going to take their calls. And you know something? They're probably right. Too much uh, to talk about. Yeah, too, too many mind. things going on to sit here and get all bent out of shape because, we, you know, the callers want to talk. Anyway, in Miami, 751-WIOD. In Broward, 524-WIOD. Boca and Del Rey, 278-WIOD. And in Palm Beach, 655-WIOD. You know what would make me feel really great? Mm. Is if we had a couple of real old farts call in and give uh -huh, us that routine about, yes. what would this town be without the senior citizens? Right, right. You know what it would be without the senior citizens? A pleasure. I think they're dialing. A picnic. I think they're dialing as we speak. Do you have to say that? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. I think the honeymoon is well over, and of course we really ticked them off when we took all those young people last week. Oh. On Thursday we did under thirty, and then on Friday we did students, and that really just didn't they um, say the switchboard was mobbed with complaints about that? No. Didn't we hear that? No. He's leaving us no. out. No. No. I don't think so. Oh. Oh, I don't I was, recall hearing that, so you kind of like make it up as you go. Along I was now. hoping. All right, we've got a call about Ernie's show. Hello. Yeah, you know, I figured I'd try to be a part of the WIOD family. So Saturday I tuned in to, to uh, IOD. Say it one more time, sir. To WIOD. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, We're up to, to 87 now this hour. <laughs> to, listen, to listen to Ernie's show. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had, I got to say, his best show was either the Sox or the Flagellant show. <laughs> and those happen to be the only two shows I had ever listened to. Yeah. In fact, if you put those two together, you really got something. You got a hot sub subject there somewhere. On IOD? Yep. So I figured uh, I'd give Ernie a shot. And let me tell you, I don't know who was worse, him or the plant doctor. Oh, now, now, see, here you go. You're, I'm, the, um, the intention here was not either for butt-licking but or, but no, 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 or no. ripping. We don't want to rip Ernie because no. he's part of our WIOD he family here at WIOD. I don't think he did a well enough job defending. Really? Really. Oh, so in other words, Ernie was allowing people to call in and rip me on his show. Is that Why don't you just come right out and say it, okay? That's the way I see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. In other it. words, he had a four-hour Neil Rogers hate fest. Yeah. Well, before that... Well, like I said, Ernie's a piece of excrement, okay? <laughs> on WIOD. That's right. Um, he talked about gun control, which is one of his third favorite subjects. Oh, And then God. he went into school signs, and uh, why are they yellow? I don't understand. No, the, the problem with school signs in Dade County is not why are they uh, yellow, but why have they got six lines? I mean, mm -hmm. even at the optometrist, you can't read that many lines in 30 seconds, and as you're driving by, in two or three seconds, you're supposed to read six lines, except Wednesday, except on yeah. Sukkis, alternate yeah. Tuesdays. Yeah. I mean, these people in Dade County, man, these government people all over South Florida, the biggest bunch of morons that ever came down the pike. Well, I think his problem was that the yellow sign gave him some type of bladder response. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. Well, it figures. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, was he allowing people to call in and, and I, chop I, me up? Because I didn't listen. I, I only listened to part of it. I got sick of it, and I was in my car, and I was kind of forced. But uh, from what I heard, yeah. You were kind of forced, like at gunpoint? Well, uh, you know, my wife was in That's the, the only way I'd listen to Ernie's show, yeah, well, would be hey, at gunpoint. He's, he's part of IOD. <laughs> he's part of the family. We've got to support him. <laughs> no, we don't. He doesn't do this for a living. He can't make a living from that one Saturday show. 
Didn't he used to have... And I heard him belly aching that one day when they took him off his Sunday and they were putting on the best of cane and he was carrying on like a like a spoiled child. Carry- oh, why did they take me off on Sunday? Oh, my career. Yeah, well, maybe if, maybe if we're lucky, he'll call the show. We'll, have a good we'll get Ernie to call in today. We'll straighten yeah. him out. Because Ernie's basically a good guy. He's just in the wrong business. Yeah, well, I vowed never to do my Ernie Sochin Jr. again. Okay. Okay. Good luck to you, sir. Good day. Okay. You know, he, was, he is so chronic now. I know. That's Paul Harvey I don't mean, Jr. Uh, I don't mean Ernie. I mean Paul Harvey yeah. Jr. He is so chronic now. Just, just give it a rest for about two weeks, okay, Paul? You know, he reminded me he did have one caller Saturday that said, Ernie, that sock show you did, me and my husband are still talking about that show. Yeah, what does that tell you about their family, okay? <laughs> that they're still talking about the sock show they did a year and a half ago? <laughs> That wow. says a lot about this town and its mentality when they talk about socks for four hours, all right? But here was the classic. Here's the Ask the Lawyer. And by the way, story. I don't see anything happening on those Palm Beach lines. And if Uh-oh. you think we're going to be nice to you like we were last week, the, the honeymoon is over, okay? And we're going to start <laughs> reaming you out and exposing you to the rest of South Florida as to what a bunch of laid-back douchebags you are in Palm Beach. I was listening to Steve the other day, too, and he had one of his contrived debates. Uh-huh. And the same thing. He said, well, we're full in Dayton Broward, Palm Beach, and Boca. Yeah. So it's not just us. They just don't care up there. They're indifferent about anything. They're a bunch of mung brains. 278-WIOD in Boca and 655-WIOD in Palm Beach. See, if you gave all the numbers, that's four WIODs right there. <laughs> Just given the phone numbers, okay? Yeah. So see, if you gave the, four, the phone numbers like six times an hour, you've yeah. only got one WIOD left to give to meet your quota. Wow. This is like the Florida Highway Patrol. You know how they deny they have quotas? We have quotas at WIOD. And I got news for you. This hour, we are so far over the quota, man. We did, we did like three hours of call letters in one hour. <laughs> this is great. Okay, let's go to Hollywood. Hello. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. The Wad is back. Hey, wow. I'll be damned. How you doing, Wad? Pretty good, Uncle Neil. I hear you're on IOD now, so I figured I'd call and check in and not become chronic. I'll be damned. Where have you been all these months? Well, we've been in Surfside listening. Well, I moved to Hollywood, but the boys of Surfside are still there. Are they really? They're still... But you got out while you were still young enough to get out. I tell you, I heard you talking about the blue hairs again. Yeah. So I figured I'd call. They're invading Surfside now. What do you mean they're invading Surfside? They are Surfside. Well, they are now used to be us. Man, the median gone. age in Surfside is 96. Roughly, yes. That's why we're trying Hollywood now. Give that a shot. Yeah, that's a good young town. <laughs> Not bad. The median age is about 72. Yeah, well, listen, you just improved 24 years in one move, man. That's, that's right. not bad. I still listen to you, though, so maybe you'll give them all heart failure. That, well, that's what we're trying to do, okay? Mm-hmm. Keep Try to have, like, a massive death show one day. <laughs> that's great. I mean, you just keep ripping the blue hairs. They'll have a heart attack. They'll die. We'll bring the median age down to 50. Okay. Good well, hearing from you, Wad. Okay. I'll try not to be chronic. Bye-bye. Okay. Wow. Oh, wait a minute. Is that Don Cox? On eight, talk oh, about no. chronic. What do you want? I just wanted, now that you're having people over 20 call, I just thought I'd call and say good morning. We said over 20, not over 60. <laughs> I, Neil, you are a lot older than I am. Am I really? Yes, you are, Neil. How old are you? I'm uh, 40. Oh, I'm like six years older than you are, boy. Yeah. I feel real old now. I didn't think yeah. anybody was older than you are. <laughs> Sonny Fox is older than both of us. Yeah, Sonny's older than both of us put together. <laughs> I just thought I didn't tell you that I was enjoying listening to you beat on Ernie today. Yeah, what about that, Ernie? What the hell are we going to do with him? I don't know. Maybe we should uh, get him a job as a used car lot or something. Maybe we should get him a job on WLYF. Then he he could really relate to those 90-year blue hairs, you know? He couldn't get any trouble then, could he? Couldn't say anything. (laughs) This is the music of your life. Right. (laughs) (laughs) We could put him and Wichner on the same station. Wow. We could call it the big sleep. (laughs) As a, as a matter of fact, put them on late at night so we make sure everybody got their nightcap. By the way, if anybody wants to call in and rip Ernie today, our telephone numbers are... <laughs> well, so, you know, you have quarters, too, for call letters? Oh, man, I got this memo hey, this hey, morning. What are you supposed to do an hour, Neil? See, we don't even get original uh, memos. We get copies of old memos because we're new here. Oh, right, right. And Bill, Bill doesn't want to waste... Do an hour. He doesn't want to waste the ink of writing new ones, so he here's a memo that was June 20th. And we get it now. It's marked 1114, Neil and Glenn. Mm-hmm. Uh. And we, our goal is to say our call letters at least 25 times an hour. 25? Yeah. Well, listen, you know, if you were on a... And we've already done 75 this hour. Uh, on a music station, you only have to do them 15, so... Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Boy, you're lucky. Yeah, well, you got all them four- and five-minute breaks of, uh, you know, music going... <laughs> See, 
the, our, our assumption is that the audience are a bunch of absolute morons, and that they haven't got any idea what station they're listening to, and we have to keep telling them over and no, no. over again what it, it is. The only people that assume that are the program directors. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's called, in the business, job justification. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. It's like, oh, how many memos did I write this week, honey? That's <laughs> right. But at least Bill Wise admits that he's memo crazy. Yeah. And, uh, well, it's important to be that way. And basically, we just are uh, going to ignore most of them anyway. Hey, so you don't have it. something to think about when you're in the bar at night. That's it. Yeah, did I write a memo today? Oh, God. You got it. Nice talking to you, Neil. Okay, uh, Cox. Bye. Bye. There he goes. Cox on the radio, boy. He, wow. uh, he's getting almost as chronic as Sonny, isn't he? Well. I said almost. Yeah. Don't get nervous, not Don, but to almost, man. These FM people, you see, when they really want to reach an audience, they call this show. You know that? No, it's true. <laughs> yeah. It was that way when we were back on the WINZ when mm -hmm. they had listeners under the age of 100, which is no longer true. Boy, those were the days. And by the way, I want to announce pubicly that I received my last paycheck. Came in the mail. I want to thank Rose for making sure that that happened. Came in the mail Saturday. Really? I haven't gotten mine. Well, yours will probably be there today. You're down there in Yenemsveld, and That's the mail true. takes longer to get there. I'll let you know. But mine did show up on uh, Saturday. And I've decided that once I, and I ran to the bank, man, I put it in the automatic teller like faster than Grant took Ogis, okay? <laughs> I got that in the bank and endorsed it. And now that we're all finished, uh -huh. now I can really rip the crap out of them, okay? Well, let me... See, I was a little bit let me nervous my last check week. first, okay? No, yours is in the mail. All right. Besides, the check that's coming from there <laughs> is so small that You're it really right. doesn't make any difference. You're okay? right. It's a minor thing. So now we can really tell the audience what a bunch of douchebags they were and how they treated us like garbage... And it was always on days like your birthday mm -hmm. or the last day when you came back from vacation, when you were really rested and in a good mood. They'd always pick days like that, and then they would call you in, you know, and go nuts. <laughs> Just go crazy. We don't want you to be number one. We want to be number three, number 23, number 53. And they're well on the way, by the way. Yes, they are. We'd like to congratulate them. So their goal will be reached. No question about that. We do have an open line in Dade, by the way, where we hung up about 25 minutes ago <laughs> at 751-WIOD. <laughs> Depend on it. Okay, it's at 1050, 10 before 11 o'clock. And if you're looking for a great place for dinner tonight, I suggest you get the gang together for a 1055 at WIOD, WIOD. I think we got our whole quota for the show in, don't we? Did we do 100 yet? <laughs> I don't know. Positive. Okay, Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Good morning. How you doing? Fine. How are you? Great. Uh, banks were closed Friday, right? I think so. Last time we checked. Wins yeah. could still have uh, stopped payment on the check, don't you think? Un highly unlikely, because the check is on a bank out of Portland, Maine. And by the time they call up to Portland, pretty unlikely. In addition to which, it's against the law. Oh, I see. You can't stop payment on a payroll check. Is that right? Now we know. Yeah. What bothers me about the... Uh, you were talking about the old farts earlier, their driving habits... You ever notice in the parking lots when they, they pull in these huge battleships, <laughs> whip out those 90-pound car doors and smash the side of your car? Yeah. Uh, very disturbing. I've retaliated. I've bought an old car and, and, and go to the parking lots myself and watch them mm -hmm. pull in and, and do a little damage. Yeah. 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 They that's got that's always been my dream. You know, In fact, I'll probably go out and get one more car. I need another one. Yeah, Buy a $50 and, uh, car that barely Yeah, exactly. Get mm -hmm. a junker that you couldn't care less about and just batter the crap out of some of these old <laughs> battle ships, you know? Exactly. <laughs> in fact, in fact, let, me, let me tell you the best place to do it. You know, the public's parking lot at 69th and Collins? Well, wow. I'm in Fort Lauderdale. That, that's where the ankle paramedics hang out. In fact, it's <laughs> there where they have those narrow aisles and the parking is purposely so narrow that they're like fist fights in a lot. That's a great place to do it. Yeah, and the big caddy doors come swinging out and they come pulling themselves out of the car. Yeah. And you come and you walk out of the grocery store and there you've got a, several things. And the thing that I love about a lot of those people is they love to use the handicapped spaces even though they're not handicapped. Those are some of the favorite ones. The old farts that love to pull in those handicap spots and take them, you know, that are big enough for three battleships. Yeah, well, but they don't have they don't have the stickers for the mentally handicapped, which is what that is true. Are. That's a good point. <laughs> you got it. I think that's what they are. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, have a good day. Thanks for talking. Fun driving to you. Yeah. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, that's what I would like to do is get in that parking lot and just and go the wrong angle. You know what I'm saying? The wrong direction mm -hmm. where the cars are all parked on an angle going to the left. Yeah. And go from the other angle. And just rip up like the yeah. front of about 15 of those cars. It's like a fantasy. Speaking of fantasy, we have a Don Cox story on three. Hello. <laughs> Neil. Yeah. Remember when he had that problem and went to the pokey a few years ago? <laughs> to the pokey? Remember? Come on. You remember he had a problem. He's probably listening. Uh, he, he knows me. I'm not going to say my name, but uh, 
Anyway, he's a great guy. That was wild to hear from him on your station, you know? Yeah, well, especially since he called on, uh, what, Wednesday or Thursday last week? Did yeah. he really? Yeah, he's becoming chronic. I didn't realize that. I missed him. Well, we had Sonny call in, and we, we had, had all that um, day. who else? We had Rick, day, Rick yeah. and Spuds both called yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was they, Wednesday. It's amazing how they love you when you go to WIOD. That is oh, correct. Yeah. When we come to AM, man, we're just the greatest thing since sliced bread. We were on against uh, them on FM, then they were real nervous. I yeah. know, everybody was. In fact, last December, remember when I was calling those people on the air? Yep. Mm -hmm. And Tanner was about the only one. Tanner yep. and Joey were the only ones who handled it well. The other ones were uh, nervous breakdown time. Because mm -hmm. they knew they were going to be uh, third or fourth. Yeah. Like Rose wanted you to be. Exactly. No, not Rose. Oh, the big the big. Upper people. level management. We don't want to say Tim Williams' name. <laughs> and by the way, let, let me say this. Okay, if somebody isn't a public figure, that doesn't mean that we can't talk about them on the air. If we feel that they what they're doing in their job, if somebody washed my car, for example, they did a crappy job, and I said, John, John Doe really did a crapo job on a car. It doesn't make any difference whether he's a public figure or not. Right. You can still criticize him. Yep. And this idea that somehow they're above criticism, like they've got some special dispensation from the Pope or something, they're nuts. Somebody made a comment about you on uh, Greg's show last week. Yeah. I don't know who. I don't. It wasn't Greg. It was somebody else. They called you a fat, you know what. Fat faggot. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's, I can't uh, believe they keep saying that and, you know... It's like it doesn't change. And every time they say that, the ratings go up. Okay? I know. Mm -hmm. Because then we get other fat faggots in the audience who tune in just to hear it. <laughs> Listen, have a great day. Well, Neil, one last thing. Real quick. Is, is uh, you going to be able to sit on Jose's lap at that ABC thing when he, um, is he going to be like Santa Claus type thing or just he's going to sign autographs? Just uh, hang up on him and that's, I'll explain it to you later. What? Now I'll explain it to you later. Jose Canseco is going to be... Is it a, Overseas Electronics, yeah. not at ABC? So what's the big deal? No, there was nothing no wrong with deal. that. No, there was nothing I wrong with that. I heard it. I know. By the way, um, Sally Jesse Raphael has transsexuals on Oh, yeah, today. she's got, uh, yeah, some uh, ladies who went to the bar and tied one on. <laughs> anyway, we're at the end of this hour. We'll come back at 11.05 after uh, the news update at the top of the hour here on 610 W.I.O.D. <laughs> W-I-O-D. Okay, i got to take some of these out of order because if we get Ernie listeners on, we're going to put them on right away. <laughs> and we've got like half of his audience has called in already because this is our second one. Miami, hello. Hi. Hi. Neil, uh, I don't know who's talking about uh, Ernie like that, but in no way did he knock you. He speaks only favorable of you. Oh, we're just joking around, you know. I know. But as long as you said that. Huh? I say, as long as you said that, we're just joking yeah, around. No, he speaks so if you nice. let people rip me, then we're serious. No, but he does speak nicely, and I just wanted to set the record straight. If he does it, it's only tongue and cheek. And he's got a lovely wife and a <laughs> wonderful son and a great family and all of that, but, no, but uh, knock it off, Ernie. No, they knock each uh, other people, but when it comes to you, he only speaks nicely. Well, you know, basically what it is, it's those old butt kissers yeah. that want to ingratiate themselves with a the host, <laughs> and they feel that they have to knock everybody else. We didn't say anything about Ernie. We were talking about the callers. No, yeah. I know about the... I'm talking about the callers. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the, the caller that called in and said that he was ripping you for the entire time, but it wasn't true. Yeah. And whenever I... Boy, you sure get a lot of different stories, you know? Yeah, no, but this is the truth, because I, I hear him, and when he talks about you, it's always favorable. Yeah. So I just wanted to set the record straight. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, Mrs. Sochin. <laughs> It's 1117 at WIOD, and the Dade Bank just went dead. Look at that. I don't know what just happened there, but when we got disconnected, seriously, all the Dade lines went out at the same time. 751 WIOD. Oh, God. I'm serious. They all three just went blank. Maybe the other two Ernie listeners, uh, you know, got intimidated by that lady. Uh, here's a, now this caller's been on hold for an eternity, a Pompano story. Hello. Hello, Neil. I'm on WIOD. That is correct. WIOD, <laughs> sir. Say it with a smile. I'm on WIOD. Very good. Okay. See if you can guess my voice as I tell you this lovely little story. Um, I came down from New England, lived, lived in the Boston area, heard uh, Jerry Williams and Gene Burns on talk radio. Yeah. And I first came to Miami about two years ago to see if I would like the area. And one of the things that I knew that I would miss would be the quality of talk radio. So I stayed with um, Bob DiCarlo's wife. I don't know if you remember him. He was on WIOD in the afternoon. Bob DiCarlo. He was here briefly, yeah. Right. I, I a was, big, yeah. one of those real radio voices. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the best, though, at that. Yeah. Uh, I was, anyway, I was staying with his ex-wife, and she knows radio, so I, I said to her, you know... What, what do you come, mean? You, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, what, she's, you she, were staying with his ex-wife? They're divorced. Well, pretty obvious why. She's a, she's a good friend of mine. Okay. So she invited me down. She lives in Miami Lakes. Yeah. First time in South Florida. I said... Tell me a little bit about the radio, especially talk radio. She had no idea. 
Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, I'll, fi- I'll just scan the dial. So I'm, I, every day I decided to take a long ride up north to visit Fort Lauderdale and these areas, and I started scanning the dial. And I want to tell you, as keen an ear as I had for talk radio, I immediately tuned into your show just by the quality of your voice. I thought you had one mm-hmm. of them. Well, no, you weren't doing Aha uh-huh then. You, oh. were, you were doing uh, just before Taffy McCallum. Oh, yeah. What was that, WINZ? WINZ, yeah. Well, I'd Former be driving up route, route 95, and the, the, I had just come from the cold New England uh, winter, and the warm Florida air was coming into the car, and I was listening to you on the radio, and I knew almost immediately that this was one of the best that I had ever heard. That is correct. And it, 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 to this day, I, now that I know Route 95 and I've driven around the town, I've been living here for a year, I, I don't have the same uh, sensation, and I wish I could go back to that initial thrill of listening to the program. You don't have the sensation anymore? Well, now I know a Maybe little bit more about the area, and, and I might... know you a little bit better. Yeah. But in the, I just wanted you to know it was the quality of the voice, along with the humor that was obviously there. Yeah. That was uh, great. You're, now, you're not saying that the humor isn't there anymore. No, the you? humor's definitely there. Okay. Now, I want to know if you can guess my voice. I've had a couple of conversations with you, and I, I am I possibly in, in danger of becoming chronic. Carl DeSouz. Oh, no. I know who it is. Who is it? Is it? Let's see if the bird knows. I know who it is. You've been on. You've been on the show. No. No. This no. isn't Bob from Pompano, is it? No, no, no. You've never been in the studio with Neil on the air. Never. Oh well, then I'm wrong. I don't know then. I, 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 I was. I was afraid that I would live with this label the rest of my life, and I see that I'm going. To, I'm the Rick Siderman turncoat. Oh. oh, you are getting a little chronic. Yeah, this is, I think, your fourth yeah, call yeah. in uh, six shows. Yeah. I know. I, so that I'm, I'm going to go for treatment for that this afternoon, okay, so you won't so, be hearing from me. Okay, the plane for San Diego leaves at 1.30. <laughs> okay. Okay, have a good trip. Okay. Bye-bye. Wow. Yeah, I notice on this station we do tend to have a few more chronics, and, mm-hmm. you know, there are things we're going to have to work on to try to convey that message to some of these people, and especially, and he's not from this station, he's a carryover, is Paul Jr., I mean, he's just gotten out of control. <laughs> oh, he calls every day. Yeah. Every stinking day, man. The only day that we Reminds missed... me of the old Craig Worthing show. Wow. And I like Craig. I'm not knocking Craig, but he used to have some of the worst chronic regulars in the history of talk radio. Yeah. Like Bob Barron. Is that the example? And Bob Martin. Oh, my. And <laughs> Joy from Davey. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm on the radio. <laughs> oh, God. You notice the only day we didn't hear from all these chronics was Friday when you only took Yeah, we took the young people, and it was mm-hmm. a breath of fresh air, if you pardon <laughs> that expression. It's 1121 at WIOD. Here's another Ernie listener. We're up to three. Hello. Hello. Is that me? Yes. Can you hear me? I can't hear you very well. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Good morning, Neil. How are you? I'm very well. I hope you are. Yes, I'm great. I think you are, too, and I'm delighted that you're back at a normal hour. I I just heard a a caller tell you that he wants to come to live here and leave Vegas. Yeah. I'd love to know why. My husband's crazy about Vegas. Yeah, me too. I'd love, I wish you had asked him why he wants to leave that area. Well, his mother lives here. He wants to be close to Mom. Well, he should take her to Vegas. He wants to go play uh, poker with Mom. Pardon? He wants to play poker with Mom. (laughs) If he calls back... And if anybody else does... Or he wants to do something to Mom with a poker, something like that, he said. I'm not sure which one. (laughs) Well, I I was very curious because we are so seriously thinking of going out there because... Now, wait a minute. Uh, Nick just wrote here, Reno is the good city. I've been to Reno. Don't don't write messages on there like I'm some kind of a douchebag. Reno is fine. But it, now you have a better chance to win in Reno. I've always discovered I do better gambling in Reno, but the idea that... It says, Vegas is a car dump. What does that mean? Oh, get out of here. Vegas is tremendous. It is. What Nick knows about Nevada, man, you could put in a thimble and have room for the WIOD sales staff left over. <laughs> Neil, where did you stay when you stayed in Vegas? Oh, I've been all, at Tropicana, Caesars, um, all kinds of places. Did you ever go to the Golden Nugget? No, no, I never stayed downtown. I've driven downtown at night so I could see what it looked like, but I never gambled there. It is so beautiful. Well, but isn't it a shame that we have to sit here in what could be a tropical paradise and uh, looking at all these uh, boat people who just got off the boat, you know, (laughs) staggering around the beach and all over the place, and this could be a paradise. We could be having so much money in this town now, we wouldn't know what to do with it, and uh, we have to get on a plane and take a trip that takes like forever just to go have a good time. Yes. Lovely speaking to you. Okay, you have a nice day now. You too. Bye-bye.
Now, that was one of Ernie's callers, and she was a nice lady, but you do notice Ernie's demographic. Yes. It's, um, 11... <laughs> 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 no, seriously, she was a very nice lady, and she made a lot of sense and had a good sense of humor, which is great, but Ernie, you got to get some young topics, Ernie, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like Argyle socks just doesn't make it anymore. <laughs> yeah, maybe he could do, like, athletic socks, <laughs> or athletic supporters, one or the other. In fact, knowing Ernie, I wouldn't put it past him, probably do a show this uh, Saturday on jock, jock mm -hmm, straps. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a uh, open line in Dade where we just hung up 751-WIOD. And on Steve's show this afternoon, another contrived debate, Stuart Johnston, defender of deadbeat dads. Now, that's not... Hates women, is it? Oh, this is a different guy? Deadbeat dads debates Judy Wilson, and boy, are we familiar with her. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Justice for sexually abused children... And there's going to be a lot of abuse on the Kane show this afternoon at 2 exclusively. Oh, that's right. Frank uh, Douchebag is the guy that he... Is he still have him on? No. Thank really? God for that. While you're getting there, Steve, you're improving. 1124 at WIOD. Talk Radio 610 WIOD. It's 1127 at WIOD. And our next call is... In from... Oh, wait a minute. Before the call, I wanted to know. I knew I was missing something there. Um, you wanted to beg for food, is that what it was, from Flores? Yeah. Because the track isn't open today, so Carmine can't be going to the track. Are they open on Monday, Flores? Flores. Does anybody know? I don't know. But if they happen to be, um, you know, a nice plain cheese pizza would be fine, yeah, right? Yeah, just one. And we did it very antiseptically like we've been mm -hmm. doing, put it on lots of papers yeah. so that there was no oil or anything on the table. By the way, how do you like, like our new clock? <laughs> I don't see it, uh, but it's... It's on the way. On the way. Okay, Hello. Yes, hi, Neil. Hi. Do you accept like calls? L I K E? Like, like you know calls? You know how y'all get so many derogatory? I'm just calling to tell you I'm home sick today. I teach school, and the only thing made me feel better was to know I could listen to you. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah, we accept butt kissing calls, sure. Well, oh, no, come on, don't. It's I just a joke. It's just a joke. I know. Listen, can I Don't ask be you? uptight. I am uptight. Why? I'm nervous calling. I well, just relax, okay? Take a nice deep breath, relax. Okay, what I want to ask you, do you is it true you have a Corvette? Yeah. I have one, too, and I've had many of them, and I want to know how you like yours. And what it's the greatest car I have ever driven in my life. Yes, I agree. It's a totally different experience of driving. I mean, like, you know, when you put your foot on that accelerator, man, you can, you got total control. You can go yep. as fast as the speed of light, practically, yep. and you can leave everybody in the dust, and if you want to pass somebody, they're not, it's, a, it's just a totally different driving experience. And I you look love damn it. good driving it, don't you? Oh, yeah. What, what year and what color is it? It's your? an 88 red. Oh, get out of here. Is it? Yeah. Ooh. With a very expensive, I could have a custom-made stereo system in it. That sound advice did that was just tremendous, and man, that thing vibrates like a mix master for the, when you get that stereo cranked up. It's great. Do you have the glass top? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. And that's why I like when it rains. Yeah. Oh, don't you love watching, looking yeah. up and watching that rain come down? Yeah. Listen, okay, and I also wanted to tell you that... Of course, it kind of is difficult, you know, like at an intersection, a busy intersection, <laughs> when you're looking up watching the rain come down, but... I know. You know, you're... I, t I teach school, like I say, but in my other life, in my real life... um, you are a real influence on me. I use, you know, cereal. Are you cereal? I say that all the time. Yeah. And in pubic, you know, I say I go shop to shopping at pubic. Mm hmm And I didn't like Glenn at first, but I have to say to both of you, I, he is funny, and I, I think he has the greatest laugh, and just, I don't know. I mean, he grows on you. Yeah, and you too Like a are, tumor. Yeah. I've listened to you since <laughs> no, you were on your other two stations, and like, I, the only thing is, I can't listen to you now because I... I teach school, so what? Well, the thing can to do I is... tape your show or what? Yeah, tape it. Have somebody tape sure. it for you. There are a lot of people tape this show. Oh, well, mm -hmm. it's Trust worth me. taping. Well, listen, sure. it's great hearing from you, and you were a great caller, and have a wonderful day, and enjoy your vet. Yeah, you too. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Now, wasn't she nice? Yeah. And there was nothing nice. wrong with that. You don't have to be bitter and hostile to call this show. It helps, <laughs> but you don't have to be. Yesterday, I saw a red, not a red, but like a, a custom paint job on a vet. It was about an 85 vet. Candy apple red. Mm. And it was the most... I've never seen anything like it. It shined <laughs> like the sun. I mean, it was just glistening. It was the most beautiful paint job I've ever seen. And it was a young man driving it, too, who was close to being that beautiful also. And I thought to myself, isn't that everything you could ever want mm -hmm. in one little package? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and he took off like a bat out of hell. Okay, it's 11.32 at WYOD. We'll go to Davey. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hi, this is Dave. Yeah, Listen, Dave. I wanted to get you straight on what Ernie said yesterday. Okay, I'm let's Ernie get this listener. straightened out. Okay. On Saturday. Because Ernie's a great guy, and we don't want to attack him unfairly. Interested in listening to talk radio. I mean, when we want to, when we're going to attack Ernie, we want to have a real good reason for it. Is that right? Like next week. Yeah, right. But um, what happened was some guy called and said that you were soliciting young male listeners for your personal reasons. Oh yeah, well, and I Ernie that hung been. up on him. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And Bird, is yeah. that the guy's name sitting next to you? Yes. Okay. Um, I was listening to the show Saturday, and they didn't look up the. The rating in the Arbitron because they never heard of the show. What was that? The lawyer show. What did they look it up in? They had a they had a number. They came up with a number two point eight. No, I don't think from? they did. Yes, they. I listened oh, to it. See sir. here we go. Now wait, wait a minute. I didn't listen, and I don't listen to the radio on a weekend to AM at any rate. I listen to music. Okay, when I'm in the car. But the bottom line is, we've had about five people now talk about this show. There is there are no two people who heard the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Is this a classic example of what goes on in this town? Yeah, yeah, that is classic. You people only hear what you want to hear. Yeah, right. anyway, now that I've done giving you that, let me stroke you a little. I've been listening to your show since you came on from the a from the FM. Yeah. I never listened to you before, and I think you're doing a good job. Well, thank and you, I'm sir. Enjoying you're your a show. great American and a wonderful caller, yeah. and I agree with everything you say. Yeah, except, except, except get Ernie on after you instead of that Steve Kane guy. Okay, well, he'll be starting this afternoon. He's All doing, right. He's doing another sock show today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, do, what has Steve got? Some um, a couple of guys who hate each other. Again? No, he's got a guy and a woman who hate each other. Uh, is this the guy that wears the skirt on Oprah Winfrey? No, that's not Steve. That's uh, another Steve. No, I mean, that's is Steve that Dunn. the guy that he's having on the show? Stuart Johnson wears a skirt. Yeah, is that the guy that wears the woman hater who wears the skirt? Beats the hell out of me. Could be. <laughs> we'll see how he's dressed when he comes in, pal. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, now Sally Jesse is having what? She's having transsexuals, um, transsexuals on yeah. today. Mm -hmm. But that's not, they didn't use that word in promoting it. Well, let me look here in the uh, useless today. Wouldn't you rather look in the Herald? Don't they always have a colorful mm -hmm. thing in there? Uh, no, I like the way they uh, they say it here. Let's see. Mm, Geraldo. Churches. No, we don't have time for Geraldo. Sexual Watergate. Churches Sexual Watergate. That's what it that's says. That's good, yeah. Well, they don't have Sally Jesse here. Okay. I better, you're well, right. While we're doing the news Herald. update, we'll check out Sally because we want to get okay. it straight, so to speak. April Wortham with that WIOD News Update at 1134, and we'll be right back. All the lines are lit, so we can't give a number. But just in case, in Dade County, 751-WIOD, <laughs> Broward 524-WIOD, Boca 278-WIOD, and Palm Beach 655-WIOD. See, we got like seven of them in there without even trying. Yeah. Sally Jesse today, just one word. Just transsexual. Because I saw the promo the other day, man, and they had uh, some woman who was a guy yeah. who had, like, I don't know what was down there, but basically just like a smooth spot because they messed up the operation. <laughs> and she was talking like this. I don't know what it was all about, but it ought to be pretty exciting, especially when they uh, rip Sally's glasses off and they start that fist fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Their favorite. Okay, let's go to Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neely. Yeah. How you doing? Okay, pal. Pally? Uh, what's the story on trepidation? Is Can it be played anymore? Is the FCC on your butt or what? There's nobody on my butt, first of all. <laughs> let's get that straight. And secondly, uh, I went, as soon as I find it, i got to uh, you know bump it by boopers here and see if they're going to let us play it or not. But I have a feeling they will. You do, huh? Well, they're letting us play anything else we want. Hmm. It's because Bill Wise is busy writing all these memos. Mm-hmm. Uh, rumor control, what's the story with Don Johnson and Barbara? Barbara Streisand. Is this rumor control? Yeah. He wants to know the story. We don't know. We don't know, sir. All we know is they were last seen rubbing noses together at the Miami arena. All we know is what we read in the tabloids. Yeah. And Bird? Yes, sir. Your nemesis. He's uh, having a tough season this year. Are you going to change your name because of it? <laughs> Yo, yeah. Sports is such a heavy yeah. influence on my yeah, life. Bad ankle, all kinds of problems. It really breaks that. my heart. I only wish he'd break his neck. <laughs> Listen, have a great day, pal. Take care. Bye bye. That was kind of an interesting call, wasn't it? Wasn't it? No. <laughs> Twenty-one till noon at WIOD, and we'll go to Boynton <laughs> Beach. Boy, this must be a bonus call today. Boynton, hello. Hi, Neil. Hi, Glenn. How are you doing? Good to talk to you. I wanted to tell you a funny story about Dick Curtin, if I can. Yeah, in Detroit. In Detroit, right. My daughter was telling me that the management 
at the station where he works got a letter that they thought it was just terrible. He, they heard him eating a donut. Oh, and God. They thought what a that slob. That was terrible that he shouldn't be eating yeah. on the show while he was, you know, talking on phones and so on. Well, he started a little contest in retaliation. Guess what kind of donut I'm eating today. Mm. So people call up and, uh, you know, custard or jelly or whatever. Hey, that's whatever. a good idea. We wouldn't do it with donuts, but we could do guess what we're eating on the air. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we could make real guttural sounds into the mic like we used to, right. and people could call in and guess. And guess what it is. And then as a prize, like if it was a pizza, we could send them a cold slice in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I heard that, I thought immediately of you, and, and because you always eat and enjoy it so much. Yeah, we sure do. On this show, and... I think it's a lot of fun. I also, could I tell you about what Bill Bond said on Channel 7 in you, Detroit? You can tell me anything you want about Bill Bond. Uh, well, I don't I, know if you like him or not, but... Yeah, I love Bill Bond. Oh, fact, well, this is great. There was a woman who was on the way to the airport to pick up her husband. She stopped at McDonald's, was assaulted, raped, stabbed, ended up in Providence Hospital. Bill Bonds was interviewing a policeman with regard to that situation. And he said to the policeman, did she go pick up her husband? I mean, here this woman is bleeding, stabbed, raped, kidnapped. Yeah. And his question was, did she go pick up her husband? Well, Bill's had a rough time, you know. Yeah. <laughs> after, after hearing a question like that. When, sure, you have, woman... when you have to sit next to Dave Dials all those years, it rubs off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, listen, you have a good day now. Oh, you too. It was nice talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, I bet you like all those Detroit trivia stories. Oh, boy. No, my favorite Bill Bond story is, there. well, there are two stories. One, there was a, a news story about Mao Zedong. This is obviously years ago. And it showed him, it was a Chinese news from the government, you know, propaganda. And it showed him swimming, and it was, like, sped up about three times. <laughs> and it looked like, Mar it made Mark Spitz look like a child. Mm -hmm. okay? I mean, his arms were flapping, and he was going like a mile a minute. And it was one of the funniest things that I've ever seen in my life. And he, he never recovered. He kept laughing. <laughs> and through the whole newscast, man, he never, mm -hmm. ever came back. And he'd start reading another story, and then he'd just go crazy. Mm -hmm. And he'd look back at a character. Well, it was a funny story, you know, and, he just, mm -hmm. and he'd try to compose himself. And the other story was when he was doing the news on Channel 7 in Detroit, and there was a fly in the studio, and it kept landing on his nose. Wow. And he didn't want to brush it off, and he kept... It went on again during the whole newscast. He kept like pushing his head around, you know, to get it off, and it would fly around a little bit and come right back on his nose. And you could even hear it in his mic, you know, the sound that a fly makes. So anyway, I thought you'd get excited about that. It's 11:42 now. Why? See, I'm sitting way over here now. I understand why Steve squints because if I move the mic over, and I could be close to the screen and see what the hell's going on. He can't see a thing. No, he man. is blind as oh, a bat, isn't he? God, it? what is going on with him? He can't wow. see anything. I think it's those contacts, isn't it? It could He's be. He's got those real blue contacts, yeah. man, and they're as blue as the as the sea. I know. Do you see how close he puts his head to the board when he pushes those phones? He's the only guy I've ever seen who has to take the glass cover off the <laughs> off the screen in here and stick his head right inside on top of it mm -hmm. in order to see what the hell's going on. Miami, hello. Yeah, hi, Neil. How you doing? Um, fine. How are you? I'm just calling because I switched from FM radio AM. Never used to listen to talk show and tell you how much I enjoy it. Thank you. You're welcome. What are, you, what are you doing today? Uh, well, I'm at the office. I spend the whole day in an office. And, and li listening to the radio. Yeah. That's the kind of job I like. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're great. The show is great. Now, are you you're like a new listener? Uh, yeah. Never listened to talk show before. Are you serial? Yep. I'll be damned. That's what we ought to do tomorrow. Seriously. I know I don't want to do a poll, mm -hmm. but I guarantee you in just the a few days that we've been on, we've revolutionized the lives of a whole at least 20 or 30 people out there. Now, what you're saying is you used to listen on FM, but you came over to AM. Is that what you're saying? No, I used to listen to... Um... Music. Yeah, music. Yeah. Oh, you're kidding. You never heard be, Neil? You used to be like a space cadet. No. <laughs> you never heard Neil? No. God. That's astounding. Well, let me congratulate you, sir, on getting a real life, okay? Yeah. Right. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye-bye. Bye -bye. Well, I didn't realize. Now, that was our best caller of the six days that we've been here. We've had a lot of good calls. I don't want to put anybody down, like Paul Harvey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there something we want to say to Paul? Oh, great. This is, you know, I love this. This is, I think, my new favorite. Yeah. Something very short message for Paul Harvey Jr. Good day. <laughs> Give it a rest, baby, okay? I mean, he is the, if you looked up chronic caller in the dictionary, Paul Jr. is exact. his picture is there. I'm telling you. 
because he can't give it a rest, and he keeps promising he's not going to call us, and he's not going to call this one and that one, and he just can't control himself. I uh, know. And just, he used to do the he voices, he then he gave up it. the voices, then he started with Stan, and Stan went off the air. Guy is just out of control. Out of control. <laughs> I want to get this caller in for Lauderdale who's got who wants to straighten you out on the ratings. Hello. Hello, Neil. Hi. And Glenn. It's just great hearing you. I'll bet. Um, I, it is. I'm hyperventilating. I'm so nervous. Why? Well, I'm speaking with the great one. Um, Glenn? <laughs> yeah, why don't you just uh, talk... You're both great. Why don't you just talk to me? Maybe you'll feel better. Okay. Well, Ernie had a guest on his show on Saturday. Oh, you're another Ernie listener. Well, I, I just I couldn't happened... have told. <laughs> and his guest is the new uh, critic from the Gazette. From the Gazette. Uh, I mean from the Herald or whatever it is. <laughs> the, Miami, the Miami Gazette, yeah. Uh, the Miami my favorite paper. Herald. And she had her Arbitron book with her. So, see, I and, was right. And this chap called in on a mobile phone and got in ahead of the line, sort of, because he was so important. And he was asking what was the first 15-minute rating and the hour rating. And he was going on like this, holding on a long yeah. time. And I recognized his voice as being lawyer Gravenhorst. And uh, he gave Ernie, uh, you know, he kept him a long time. Well, who, the, who, the, who is that? He was a guy from that show? He was one of the uh, one of the two lawyers. I forget the other one's Boy, name. Boy, is that desperate or what? Mm -hmm. and, and he kept quizzing and quizzing and mm -hmm. quizzing. And I thought... That, that's probably because they wouldn't tell him over there what the numbers were. That's right. You know and that was, Dennis Collins man. And he was upset because he had been terminated, I guess. That's uh -huh. right. <laughs> and... Uh, so I wondered how long it would take before someone would call in, and sure enough, a, a gentleman called in mm -hmm. and said that it was this lawyer, and uh, and so that's the story. So uh, and and Ernie didn't recognize him because obviously he had never heard this program. That's right. He said that. Right. So, so basically, and neither had much of anybody else either. So, so, ba so, so basically, that's why, that's why that he they had the Arbitron book, and I guess it must be rather complicated to find out for each 15-minute period what it was, because this chap was very interested. And after, Ernie said, I wondered if an average listener would want to know all this information. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> no, that's for sure. It's a very, it was a very boring show, and that's why it's off. Was it a boring show? Oh, you, you don't mean Ernie's show. No, 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 oh. no. The two lawyers, they were very arrogant young lawyers who were yeah. trying to pick up business and didn't do very well. Well, that's life, you know. That's that life in a big life. city. We got too many lawyers anyway. That's right. And I, I just love your show, and I'm glad you're back on AM. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. 1147 at WIOD, your gossip station for the 80s. <laughs> this is like Yenta Monday. I love that, mm -hmm. man. I love to get all, every Yenta on, and we get like 50 different callers about the same subject, <laughs> and they all heard something a little <laughs> bit different. Don't you love that? Yeah. Speaking of a little bit different, here's a mobile call in West Palm. Hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Uh, I used to w uh, listen to you one time on your other station there, and I believe one time you had a pizza thing about pizzas. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. Okay. Oh, you, we you had want... a pizza thing? Yeah, like about asking... who made the best pizza and... Uh, oh, yeah, we did night. a pizza show, yeah. You remember that? I thought you meant a pizza eating no, thing. No, no, no. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay, well, the reason why I'm calling you, I had a guy from Day County come up to my pizza place in Jupiter. Somebody called him and said Jenny's was one of the best in Florida. And, uh, Jenny's? Had, Jenny's Pizza. Is Where the hell is that? In Jupiter. Oh, in Jupiter. Okay. Right next to Uranus. Yeah, right. Okay, anyways, he came up to me, and he tried my pizza, and this guy went nuts, and I guess he was a producer of your show. And I was going to send down pizza to you, and they wouldn't let me. Because I called the show up, and they said, no, we can't do that, because that's a bribe or anything like that. And I just wanted it. They a wouldn't bribe? Let me, well, they wouldn't let me talk to you. They, the producer would not let me talk to you. Well, A, it was not the producer of the show. Well, because I, I used to be the producer of Neil's AM show. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just telling you, I called somebody, yeah. and they wouldn't let me talk to him at all. wonder and who it was. I don't know, but it happened about maybe three or four months ago it was, and I got about ten customers from Day that came up to me, you know, mm -hmm. from Jupiter, and I couldn't believe it. And I, I didn't even know how my name even got mentioned until one of the guys uh, drove up and said, Hey, so, uh, I heard it on the radio show, and I had to try your pizza. And uh, now I got this guy from Day. He's a big heavyset guy who drives up at least uh, two times a month to get a large pizza. He's a big heavyset guy? Yeah. Does he have glasses? Yeah. 
This couldn't be oh, fat yes. rich, could it? It sure sounds like him. He's a real heavy set guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he comes up twice a month to get pizza, and the guy says it's fantastic. So I that rich is the only guy I know who would drive to yeah, Jupiter for pizza. Exactly. Really? The only guy that I didn't give it to him. I sold it to him. But I just, at one of these days, I'm going to uh, go down and give you guys a pizza. Okay. Okay, you. sounds good to me. Okay. Thanks How do you, a lot. Do you like it with everything on it? Anything you want to put except anchovies, no baby. No fish, huh? No fish. Okay, I'm going to take care of you one of these days. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. A lot of guys say that. Thanks a lot, pal. I like that story. Wasn't that incredible? I liked it. Fat Rich is sneaking up to Jupiter to get pizza. <laughs> That's the only guy I can think of. Oh, yeah, got to be. That. Yeah. Absolutely has to be. Uh-huh. Okay, we have an open line there in Palm Beach where we just hung up. 655-WIOD. That's 655-W-I-O-D. <laughs> And we're going to take a little pause now, the pause that refreshes, and we'll come back. And again, if Flores is getting our pizza ready, uh, hurry up. 10 W-I-O-D. 11.54 W-I-O-D. We'll go to Miami next. Hello. Yeah, Neil? Yeah. Wait, I'm just eating here, you know. <laughs> what are you eating? Anything good? Uh, ham sandwich. Oh, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Homemade, you know, with tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah. No I'm... cheese, though, huh? No cheese. Now forget it. Mayonnaise. 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 Boy, what a goyish sounding sandwich that is. And a little bit of hot sauce. Oh, that makes it more interesting. Okay, whatever you say. I got the recipe from Woody's. Um, But I'm kind of depressed. I broke up with my girlfriend today. Over what? Money. (laughs) Money? Yeah. Hers or yours? Hers, and I don't have none. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Well, you ought to be depressed. Well, I broke my leg, Neil. And, you know, like, that's the worst thing to happen when you want to have a relationship, Zoe. Why is that? (laughs) Well, right now a, I'm unemployed. You know, that should broke... be a good thing. She ought to wait on your hand and foot, what, Neil, so to you, speak. You know, it's well, it was hard to perform at first, you know. There's a lot of things that were in, contributing to it, you know. It was just like, well, how how long have you had a broken leg? Like about seven months? Oh, no, about a month or so. Yeah. But, uh, Sounds like an excuse. No. Yeah, she's probably looking to dump you anyway. Yeah. Think so? Yeah, yeah you don't have any money month? and don't have any job now? But it's only been a month. What the hell does she want with a guy like you? (laughs) How long did you go with her? Uh, I knew her for like eight months. Oh, eight months, man. Forget about that, okay? There's a million fish in the sea, if you pardon that expression, okay? Yeah? There's lots of other women out there. Forget about her. Yeah, even if you five hot treatment oil with my hair yesterday, I was kind of feeling better, you know? Yeah. I figured, well, you know, if I do something with my hair, I'll... <laughs> yeah, do something with your hair and go get a nice uh, one of those tanning parlors. I'm sure they can give you a good tan. Well, I'm going to go back to the gym today and wait less a little bit. Yeah, yeah, on your broken leg. That sounds like a good idea. Well, just work my upper body. Yeah, yeah just work your upper body. <laughs> uh, Neil, you work your upper body, and I'm sure you can run into somebody who will work your lower body, okay? Right, Neil. Um, I was wondering, when are you going to play Freeway and Spicket? No, we don't. That's gone, man. That's You'll a never play Don that? Imus thing. We will never... Ever, ever play it again. We don't have it. Wow, what a bumper. I'd play it if we had it, but uh, they pulled it out, yeah. so to speak. Are you going to be okay? Yeah, I'll be okay. Now he's really depressed, yeah. man. No freeway and spigot, no God. girlfriend, no it money, a hell no hey, job. I got you guys. But you got this show, right? Yeah, that was So what the hell else do you want? Alive. And you got that ham sandwich. Hey, I got the other half sent right here. Okay, well, it sounds to me like you're all set for at least another day. <laughs> Neil, it's been great talking to you. Okay, cheer up, will you? All right, you guys Bye-bye. have a great day. Okay. Bye. Wow. Eight months. I know. Mean, oh, That's no, not a lifetime. He acted like this was like a, you know, big deal. Yeah, and he probably wasn't getting that much anyway. <laughs> okay, here's a, a Tamarack call. Hello. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Okay. All right. Yeah, Tamarack, a young guy trapped in the slow neighborhood. Yeah, what are you doing there, sir? I have no idea. I guess rent was pretty good. I got a nice view. Of what? <laughs> of a golf course. Oh, and, uh, great. people teeing off. It's yeah. fantastic. With their little outfits. Did they wear those golf caps? Oh, they got the yeah, little, uh, what do you call it? And the, the lime green pants? <laughs> All right. No, yeah, no. now you're talking. Yeah, so I heard you're from Rochester. So am I. I moved down there about eight oh, years ago. God. Now, what are you going to I knew oh, Glenn God. was going to say that. Don't pay any attention to him, sir. We love our upstate New York calls. I knew Trust Glenn me. was going to say that. Rochester isn't like New York. It's not considered New York. It's That's more correct. like Canada. It's you more know? like the... No, don't say that. Well, well, you know what I mean. It's Only closer to Canada than it is anywhere in New York. Yeah. Yeah, gotta, now, the people are great. The weather sucks. The weather really and The food sucks. is great, man. The food is out of this oh, world. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been to Kellogg's in Canandaigua? Right by Roseland Park. See, when I was I there, went to hi- I went to high school up. in Canandaigua, sir. You, you did? So my father. Yeah, Canandaigua Academy. Uh, I have to go now. No, you don't. <laughs>
I think we're going to get like that. Do. I remember. Yeah, yeah, Roseland is Roseland is long gone, sir. So they built condominiums there. I can't believe it. That big, oh, what a roller coaster was. Yeah. Oh, geez. I'm, I'm the Wild Mouse. I am misfortune. I used to love that place. Yeah, no doubt. So, uh, when was the last time you were up there? Oh, geez. When is the last time I was up there? Yeah. Uh, last summer. <sighs> oh, really? No, this summer. I was there this year. I oh, always summers go there. are nice. Yeah, the summers are nice for about two weeks. And that's it. Now, don't go throwing your mic down and making all that noise on here. He's getting hysterical, sir. Oh, He'd no. rather have some Yahoo from Lakeland call in, some redneck douchebag who hangs out at ABC Liquors all day. That's more <laughs> his speed, okay? Yeah, well, let me tell you something happened me on the turnpike the other day. I'm in the far left-hand lane, the cruising lane, right? Yeah. And this old guy's in his, like, big old Caprice classic thing. It's about 90 miles long. You can see him coming for miles. And meanwhile, he's coming up on my right and doesn't put a signal on, but cuts in my lane, right where I am. So I'm riding where there's no lane, beeping my horn. So you would think that when you beep their horn, somebody, he would move, you know, yeah. he would move. But Not of here. course, he doesn't move. He stays in my lane. So I, you know, get out of that area, slow up. I go up on, on his uh, what, right hand side, and he's flipping me up. <laughs> like he's, it's like it's my fault. You yeah, know, he's, exactly. You know, he's, get out of his way, sir. Don't you understand? I'm it's telling you. His road God. and his time and his place. I can't believe it. Well, believe it. Well, let me tell you, I, I listen to you guys since you're on the other station. So yep. When you're plugging your 976 deal. I call it every day, by the way. Great. You thank you. You're the guy. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, when I started at the bank, I worked at the bank first union, and then uh, you started at Zeta. So I left the bank, and you left Zeta. So yeah. I thought that was kind of coincidental. But okay, well, know. stick around wherever you are now, because we're not going anywhere, okay? Okay. Listen, have, have a great, great day. Have a good one now, Neil. You Fantastic too. Fantastic call. Bye-bye. Boy, he was exciting, wasn't he? Hey, he's a good guy. He's just a little uh, terminal, that's all. Is the reminiscing about upstate News at noon is coming up next, and then, of course, uh, the pizza should be coming in any second, and we'll come back at about 12.05 on 610 WIOD. W-I-O-D. Whatever you say. 1207 at W-I-O-D. Steve has joined us. Wow. Where is he? For pizza. I By the pizza. way, I want to thank the nice lady in uh, North <laughs> Miami Beach for the $10 check we have for the Camillo's house. Is this all the mail? <laughs> what are you going like this? What does that mean? This is all the mail? It comes in, in spurts. Yes, it so does. You should pardon the expression. I have never seen any place where the mail is so bizarre. Well, you get a couple man. deliveries a day, so it may be mm -hmm. in the next, the next spurt. Because mm -hmm. if this is all we get from the IOD, does that say something about the audience? About well, how cheap they are? Mm. I'm going to wait before I make that. Laura from Continuity would like yeah. you to, <laughs> to play the Pocono... The Jewish Pocono song? Or a request. Well, tell Laura from Continuity when we're damn good and ready, we'll play it. I got it in the machine. And tell Laura from Continuity if uh, she'd go into traffic and get some of those insipid promos out of those breaks so we can come back sometime in our lifetime, we'd have time to play these bits. Have you noticed how I'm not playing as much stuff? We don't have time to play any stuff, man. Well, that's not Laura's decision. I, no, I said tell her to go into traffic. Or tell Bill Wise to go right. play in traffic. Go right other. to the top. Now, we got all these memo, man, memo after memo here today. I've never oh, seen anything like it. they gave you a packet of memos. Yeah, they gave me a packet of all the old memos. You know, all the, the well, best. you got to catch up. It says the best of Wise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Best of Wise. Yeah. Yeah. But the one I, I like it. the best, W-I-O-D, 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 that's five. <laughs> now we're, we got to work on that quote of 25. <laughs> well, what I do is See, I give out the phone numbers a lot. At the end of the phone numbers, I never call it Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. I said that's four mm -hmm. right there. Ten W I number seven yeah. five one yeah. W I and every time it counts, See, I they, keep they track. They used to do that at Wins too. <laughs> they used to. They wouldn't tell me because they were too embarrassed. But when I'd go on vacation and he would do the show, yeah, and they would say to him, "You're not giving the call letters enough." Like mm -hmm. the corporate chief engineer would go running into programming and yeah. saying, "You're not giving call letters enough." True story. And they would start. You've got to give them so many times an hour. And I never did that. I mm -hmm. give them often, but I mean enough without being nauseating. Well, there was somehow we still managed to get a nine share in midday. There's without... a uh, science to it. You know, every time every time you read the phone numbers, you, that counts as four. Mm -hmm. So right. that's good. Promos so... are from Billy W. That's what I just said. Yeah. You can go play in traffic, <laughs> like on the 79th Street Causeway. Can we call him Billy? 
Oh, we like can that. call them a spike call or a spike. Billy or I like a scooter. Can we call them scooter yeah. or spanky? You're good with these names. <laughs> I'm working on it. You remember, uh, what's it, Rick Sklar, WABC, when sure. they used to be the most overproduced AM station in America when they used to have the bells and the jingles and everything? Is this reminiscent? And Bill's been hanging out a lot with Rick Sklar lately. <laughs> okay, now, you want a big no, pizza? Came, no, I came in. I thought it was here, and I was all excited driving in the car. I heard well, someone say Well, first of all, Flores. we only got a late start. At about 11.40, I said to him, there's no food coming today. Isn't that great? We can go through a whole show we don't have to pick out. And he got very depressed because he didn't eat any breakfast. <laughs> well, I can understand that. <laughs> and I have stuff to do. So we made a night. very late request. And I don't know if Flores is even well, open on Flores Monday. Flores is not open. Maybe this will Maybe open Johnny the door. Maybe Johnny would bring some. For some other great pizza yeah. place to get mm -hmm. their foot in the door, so Because I will say one thing about last mm -hmm. week. We really scored big last week on food. Let oh, me tell boy. you, it was great. Every day. Yeah. Great. Every stinking day there was That's food. Right. As a matter of fact, Friday... Trapper's Alley came with food, and yeah. we picked out. And then before we left, Char Hut yeah. came. Do you have any delis that bring food. you food? Any delis? Once in a while. Now, they're not going to come all the way down here. Yeah, that's but mainly once in a while, Ernie's. the deli den in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Ernie is big on his delis, man. Mm. Yeah. He concentrates on those delis. <laughs> I can't believe. Look at that. You know, I'm astounded, Glenn. Driving in here, I anticipated that Neil's board would be empty because Sandy is doing a lottery show. Oh, yeah. oh my God. And I figured everybody we can't compete with that would cramp. be listening to the lottery show. Yeah. But sure enough, phones are full. Does she have Rebecca Paul on? Or... No, she's got some guy on. Oh, she's got Dan Paul. But Dan I gotta, Paul. But i got to tell you, it's... Just as dull. Anyway, I'm going to go at the door and wait for the pizza to come. I'll let you know when it we'll gets. We'll get a pizza in here. Absolutely. Trust me. Just to have keep the faith. Okay. Way to go, Steve. I like Angela. By the way, give Judy Wilson a big kiss on the lips for me. Today, <laughs> will you see please? her. She'll be. No, here. I don't. I'm not going to see her. Well, I mean, she'll be. You'll be I like will ship not see her. Passing, passing in the night. In the night. <laughs> Correct. Very fast. She speaks very well of you. Yeah. Tell her to stick it where the moon don't shine. Okay. Oh, I like I like her voice too. She sounds just like Daffy McCallum and Drag. Wow. Okay, it's twelve minutes past noon at WIOD. It's Monday night. Well, it will be Monday night. Mm -hmm. Neil Rogers Monday show. We hope you're having a wonderful day. It's a cr great day to be out there and breathing the fresh air mm -hmm. and looking around you and getting really depressed at knowing where you are. <laughs> well, I'm trying to uh, laugh extra loud today to upset those uh, old farts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The more I can laugh, the better. They hate it. Yeah. Anything? Why is he having such a good time? Man. We're so miserable. That laughing just a great. Just remember, me. that's the slogan for South Florida folks. Misery loves company. That's our <laughs> state slogan. <clears throat> also today, by the way, I guess Buddy McKay is going to throw in the towel finally today. Today, because uh, sure? every time they start counting again, he gets further and further behind. By the end of the day, it'll probably be a hundred thousand votes behind. Okay, West Boca. Hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing today? Great. Listen, I really like your show. I've, I've been a fan for a while, but I think it's a little bit cluttered on this station here. You touched upon it a minute ago with those promos well, and all I'm, that. I'm trying to restrain myself, but uh, I mentioned it to Bill the other day that they're just a little bit overproduced here. Like when you run a about a 40-second promo and you come back with a rejoin that runs about 30 seconds on the heels of a four-minute commercial break, it's like it's like taking each person in the audience and slapping them in the face, okay? It's it's really a drag. I could, you know... Well, uh, they're going to they're gonna clean it up, okay? And the news... Me, or else. The news is terminal. Oh, you want me to do the news again, right? Um... <laughs> no, he's not going to get that carried uh, away, okay? Well, I don't know. I, listening to uh, the, the news breaks that you guys have had, they seem to be picking up uh, Glenn Hill disease there. Oh. You know? But seriously, they, uh, it's just too much clutter. The news is not, it's not really a good news uh, job anyway, in my well, opinion. What do you mean by that? You're, you want me to sit here and let you rip the news department here? We've been here for six days. Can't you wait a couple of weeks? <laughs> I, wait, I waited six days. Well, that's not enough. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. But seriously, Neil, it's much too much clutter and all yeah. these promos and bumpers and Rick Weaver and Bob uh -oh. Soapdish and all this other crap. Too much. Well, they got to tighten it up a little bit, sir, and same with you. Boy, he was just hysterical, wasn't he? I wonder what time his show is on. <laughs> He'll be okay. Boy, too many malcontents out there spoil the broth, okay? Give us time. These things need to be tightened up a little bit. We need to get rid of some of those long... See, the philosophy, I guess, and I could be wrong, but I'm just assuming, having, uh, you know, experienced this... The philosophy is, you, you know, what you can say in five words, we can say in 10,000. <laughs> but we'll tighten that up a little bit, get it down to about 8,500, and things will be just fine. Can't but be done it overnight. is true, I have noticed it, that when we go away, we go downstairs, we check out the refrigerator, go out for a little walk out by the bay, <laughs> and come back uh, many, many minutes later, and it, we're just in time, every time. There's no problem. Yeah, it's true. Which is nice for the food if, if and when the pizza shows up. Now, Flores may not be open today. I know. Wouldn't you think somebody would have called in and said 
they're closed on Monday? They very easily could Or be. that Carmine would have called and said, it's on the way, don't panic? He has the hotline number. See, I get the feeling, and maybe I'm wrong, but they're just... Like the mail today, man, that blows me away. Mm. There's one check for the Camillus house in there? Wow. Well, I think there's going to be more I mean, mail. even on Zeta, even on that station where we were allegedly doing too well, yeah. it was still coming in like, you know, three, four hundred bucks a day mm-hmm. when we left, That's wasn't it? And that, Rose yeah. told me that there was a whole bunch of stuff, and I said, hey, just send it over to Brother Paul yeah. and to do your thing, you know. Hmm. It's, uh, it's disturbing. It's disturbing. Yeah. Like, we got a lot of work to do, and we don't realize it. We thought we'd just come over here and sit down and be a big piece of cake. No, we got a lot of work to do. But we're and like up Friday, for it. we had all those young people calling in. Yeah. It was a major miracle. We're How up, did that happen? We're up for the task, aren't we? Yeah. We are? Sure. Okay, it's 1218 at WIOD, and let's go to a Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello. How are you doing, Neil? Great. I right, made it through a week. Yeah, we survived the first week. Now we're really uh, getting going this week, boy. Yeah, you know, that rich pactor, he should get a life. That's, I, I <laughs> thought that's who that was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I would have sworn that's who it was. Yeah, I didn't want to embarrass What him. a pain in the butt. I got one of these jobs where I'm driving around all the time, you know? Boy, talk about <laughs> chronic. And, uh, hey, Rich, we got something for you, baby. Good day. That's it. <laughs> Boy. Anyway, I was driving down I-95 just the other day, and this guy was brushing his teeth <laughs> while driving down the road. Do you yeah. have a problem with that? I like that. I said, you know, I pulled over because I was afraid he was going to floss next. And yeah. <laughs> well, I had a, worse, no I had a much wheel, worse you know. one than that on the turnpike. I passed this old lady. She was in a big continental. She was taking a coffee enema <laughs> as she was driving southbound on the turnpike. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> hey, Glenn, how you doing? <laughs> Just great. Hey, you know, we should have one of those personal calls. Oh, good. Where people don't know what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Now, yeah. Are, you, are you happier we're on these hours again? Yeah, it's in the daytime. Who I'm alive this? when you're on. I know who this is. This I is don't. not a chronic, though. Oh. You're not chronic. Oh, it's the first time on AM. Just I know who the person is. So what are you doing for dinner uh, Thursday night? Oh, gee. <laughs> At the usual place? No, there. just kidding. Okay. But, uh, you know, I haven't heard on the phone again. Do you still have that? I don't know. No. Mm-hmm. You don't have it? No. Oh, well. There's a lot of stuff. We look, look, we got to get a lot of new material, okay? And I thought that uh, when I'd come in in the morning, there'd be all kinds of stuff in the box. Turns out that somebody left a couple of copies of The Ballad of Jimmy Swaggart and Jimmy Baker. <laughs> oh, right up to the minute. Barefoot man. And it <laughs> turns out that the Nick tells me it's a piece of garbage and don't waste your time playing it. And then the tape J America left that I was so excited yeah. about, and I thought it had two songs on it. And it said, adios and uh-huh. hasta luego. Uh-huh. That's all it was, was the two words. Oh. Adios and hasta luego, you know, from uh, the tape that we left. <laughs> I mean, come on, Jay. Is that the best you can do? Is it that all these people have lost their creativity? Wow. I can't believe that. Yeah, that's what it was. Well, let me just say, Neil, you're better than Steve is. I hope you beat him in the race. Okay, sir. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> just leave Steve alone, okay? <laughs> uh, Miami enjoys the bird. This is an unusual wow. call. Hello. Sure is. Hello. Yeah. Hi, uh, Neil? This is he. Hey, I understand you uh, like Don and Bob's hots. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. This is the call. Is this the right call or the wrong call? Oh, wait a minute. We got two different ones on three. You're the one that says they, they're no good? Well, I just don't understand how you can eat them. Why not? Because they're pretty good. They're so greasy and gross. Greasy? Yeah. No, they're not greasy. You don't think they're greasy? When's the last time you were there? Uh, I was there last year. I'm from uh, I'm from Rochester. Oh God. Well, where where do you eat your hots? At Vic and Irv's? Vic and Irv's. No, I used to go to Nick's. <laughs> to Nick, Nick's? Nick Tahoe's. Oh, great. Terrific. <laughs> but I I just uh I just understand that you were a uh, white hot fan and stuff and yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just I go to Don and Bob's and. I eat their white hots, and I just think so. Sort of well, so why don't you get something different if you don't like their white hots, huh? Why don't you get one of their ground rounds with cheese and onion? I don't know. I just thought I'd call and give you a little hard time. Okay, that's all right. No problem. In fact, if you want to come over here and give me a hard time, that'd be okay, too. Uh, no, that's okay. Okay, you have a good I'll day pass. now. <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay, he was all right. He just wanted to give us a little rough time, hard that, time. That wasn't the correct call, right? No, well, he's got, there was three was on there twice, but oh. the one died while he was on hold. Mm-hmm. Okay, 22 past noon at WIOD. Don't forget, Steve today has another contrived debate. Stuart Johnston, i got to do something about these cans, you know, because uh, 
Now they're feeding back. Mitch said they he was going to put that overhead in here, but Rome wasn't built in a day. But That's these, right. maybe if I just used my cans, maybe put them back in there. They're good because these just don't work, and I don't want to wear them. They don't. They don't work. No, I mean they work, but they don't sound any good. Oh. They don't have that. The your sound great. Certain sound, yeah. Yeah, that AM sound. <laughs> no, these were good on FM, boy. They were great. They sure were. Let's see. Does that work any better? No. Well, anyway, moving right along, it's 1223 at WIOD, and I want to tell you right now about... IOD. Oh, I'm Saul. And I'm Harry. Here to tell you about our special place. Just a short little touch. From New York is the Pocano. Let's go. That's where I want to go to get away from it all. Where was that? In the Poconos. Eat your filter fish. Love that stuff. Play shuffleboard if you wish. I got a nine. Go for Saturday brunch. Or pile the food on top of your dish. I hope it's kosher. In the Poconos. Sky Top and Buck Hill. Camelback and Bush Hill. Mount Ellie and Shawnee. There's even Mickey Rooney. I know. Split Rock and Cresco. Oh, let's go poking in the Poconos. We'll have some lunch and then we'll see a show. With Tony Orlando in the Poconos. Get a hot shake towel. You pour the champagne. Sit by the pool and act like, like a club. schlub. Let's get the chicks. You can meet a nice girl over by the exercise club. Hey, Julie, over here. In the Poconos. Sky Top and Buck Hill. Camelback and Bush Hill. Mount Ellie and Shawnee. Don't forget Mickey I Rooney. Know. Split Rock and Cresco. Oh, we let's go poking in the Poconos. We'll have some lunch and then we'll see a show with Tony Orlando. In the Poconos. Let's go. Did you forget your uh, teeth this I time? know. I got my teeth in a little good. bag with the water in there for that. Unbelievable. That's perfect. I like that. Roger uh, pulled that out of the uh, thing in there, and I appreciate it because it's so perfect for this show today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 1229 at WIOD. Our next call is in Margate, and it's about Uh hot sauce from Don and Boss. Hello. (laughs) Oh, God. Hello? They're gone. Oh, Oh, what a drag. If I had to choose between the Poconos, (laughs) the Jewish Poconos, and the hot sauce, I'll take the Poconos, okay? Sure. Miami, hello. Hello, how are you doing? Great. Former Rochesterian here. Oh, hey, we're really no. getting this going now. We probably ought to do the whole rest of the show on Upstate New York. <laughs> hey, what are you moaning about in the background? What? Well, what's this guy moaning about in the background? Talking about, oh, no. Well, he's anyway. from a real suave, sophisticated city, Lakeland. Oh, how about that? Yeah. Well, it's just it's just that this reminiscing just goes, you guys just go on and exactly. on. Exactly, and they like on. on. That's right. On, and it just I never ends. I got tell you, the reason I'm calling was not about that, but being that while well, I was on hold, I heard another caller talking about see? it. See? See? An, an idiot, by the way. I yeah, he, didn't know he, he doesn't know his armpit from his white hot. Mm-hmm. No, I'll tell you what. I uh, Well, you know where Brighton High School is, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Yes, I you do. You said you weren't going to okay. do this. I, <laughs> Who said? I spent the better part of my high school career in Don and Bob. He but. said he wasn't going to talk. He wasn't well, I went to Brighton this. Elementary, which is right next door to Brighton High. And, of course, Brighton <laughs> Elementary <laughs> is next door to Don and Bob's. Although there's that little school that used to be the primary school in between, which is now something else. Middle school, yeah. Yeah. Listen, uh, sir, can I ask you a question? Go right ahead. You ever been to Dog and Suds in Lakeland? No, 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 I thank God for that. That's why he's still alive. <laughs> That's why he's around to talk to us You know, it's right today. there on Main Street. Main so dog and Spuds, aren't they on Waxy in the morning? <laughs> oh, right, right. Go ahead, right. sir. Don't let him intimidate you with this Lakeland <laughs> crap. No, not at all. As a matter of fact, uh, when, when was the last time you were up in Rochester? Because oh. I hear there's some changes. Yeah, Don and Bob's was bought by this douchebag who owns a bunch of Wendy's up there, and he's changing everything around and ruining it. Is Destroying he really ruining it, it? Yeah. Because uh, I remember about five years ago, it took a dive, and then it, it came back. Yeah, well, this guy's going to make a dive that the, even Flipper would be embarrassed by, okay? Trust That's me. He's already, he's already in midair. Un- unbelievable. Yeah. But what did you call about, sir? No, what I was calling for, I, I was listening to the show, and I got this strange call uh, from some people over at the Herald. Yeah. Uh, their sales department. Well, their pitch was rather interesting. Called me up, and... You know, I told them, first of all, are you aware that you're calling a business? No, but as long as we've got you, let me tell you about our special business. Yeah. 
savings of only $1.13 a week. Now, the newspaper costs 25 cents an issue. This is only Monday through Friday service. Yeah, seriously. They would waste their time calling, pe- having people call, paying the people to call. Mm-hmm. Well, they don't want to save the 12 cents. They want to goose up that rates. And the fact is that, uh, you know, now that they have a total monopoly in Dade County, they ought to just leave everybody the hell alone. Yeah, now, there's another thing. I thought that I had remembered hearing something about the people up in Broward County taking their street uh, vendors off. Mm-hmm, you did. sell the newspapers. Now, they're still mm-hmm. out there. They are? They're all over the place, yeah. Well, well they're, 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 more than, they're more than ever before. They just were going to try to. Yeah. Oh, the you know, Reverend Moon a... said to stick it where the moon don't shine, okay? Well, that's crazy, because I know now down in Dade County, everywhere you look, they're selling newspapers in yeah. the morning. Oh, yeah, man. They're hawking every, every kind of stuff. They're selling condoms on the street corners, anything you can think of. That's really wild. Well, and anyway, in Tamarack, they're selling little ones, condominiums. <laughs> How about that? Okay, well, I just thought I'd give you a ring, say hello. Okay, well, listen, you call again, and we'll reminisce about upstate New York and agitate <laughs> hey, the hell out of like, somebody, okay? I, I've got plans going up there in January. I'll oh, my something. God, you want to reconsider, sir? What? <laughs> reconsider? I have to go. There's a family wedding. Boy. Anyway. Well, listen, when you thaw yourself out, give us a call from there, yeah, okay? Yeah, right. I get sick in the Miami airport thinking about how cold it is up there. Yeah. Okay. Talk to you later. Buenos dias. Uh, By the way, did you see that thing about the uh, guy, the clerk or the cashier, whatever he was, who was working at Publix in the Gables? Sure. And he said, don't I saw Jorge? That was the big story over the gigantic weekend. Gigantic story. And now the Publix people are apologizing mm-hmm. and backtracking profusely. See, it's people like that store manager and like the Ina Shiras and the Emmy Schaefers, and they, yeah. they think that I'm on their side. i got news for them. I don't want any part of that, okay? I mean, it's one thing. We speak English, wonderful, all of that. But, but to carry it to such an extreme yeah. and to be so hostile and so militant about it, man, I don't want any part of that, and I never did. Well, I'll tell you, a, a really great thing is I went to my Publix yesterday, yeah. and when the bag boy uh, put, it, put the groceries in my car, he said to me, when is Diaz or something, you know, in Spanish. I guess that was uh, kind of their own little private protest that the... Uh, oh, is that what they were doing? Yeah. Happy 12th anniversary from the bag boys at Publix. <laughs> Happy 12th anniversary, Neil. Yeah, I'm a bag boy. And I'm, my name's Jason. Yeah, we know, Jason. We know. Just uh, <laughs> cut the crap, okay? It's 1234, April Wortham with the WIOD News Update, and we'll be right back. Ken Seiko, by the way, just mentioned that for whoever that was. Was that Joe Jr.? Yes, it was. Okay, 21 till 1 at WIOD. The good news is that Flores is going to be sending Pete's in about 25 minutes or so. That's all we care about is that we get fed, okay? Yeah, I told you, if I gave him a winning horse, he would come through for us. Didn't I say that? (laughs) Just a joke. Just kidding around. But I did give him a winning horse. I did. (laughs) Why are you looking at me that way? Let's take this mobile call on six. Hello. Hey, Neil and Glenn. How you doing? Okay. <laughs> hey. Hey. Overmodulating. Yeah, uh. puking your guts out, sir. <laughs> uh, Glenn, this one's for uh, this one's for all the people from Florida. I think I can sum up uh, Neil's reminiscing with the people from New York in one word. All They're right. not from New York, sir. They're from Rochester, which is like not New York. Is well, that Rochester, state, uh, New York? The word is chronic. Ah. Uh. <laughs> no. I swore New York came after Rochester. Listen, if I have to choose between talking about Rochester or listening to Rich Pactor call for the 10,000th time, <laughs> ripping, ripping the news department, and ripping everybody in this radio station, where they're paying us more money than God has, I mean, enough is enough already, right? Right. We'd like to at least make it through the first month. <laughs> Gl- uh, Neil. Yeah, that's yeah. it, Neil. Uh, I'm noticing that uh, you're a little gun-shy. About what? I don't know. I... I... I first started listening to you when you were on uh, I no yeah I N Z mm-hmm. and and you were like outrageous yeah I mean, I mean there was a problem with some attorney that you did I probably don't want to which talk which we ab- can't talk about right. which we won't talk about but but nonetheless uh, you, I mean you were you were excellent it was great you, you got my blood going then you went to Zeta they kind of like muffled it muffled yeah. it muffled it now well, you're back on AM and you're a little gunshot well that's true but you got to understand you become conditioned to certain yeah. things and after you've been restrained and muzzled like we were over there to the point where you had to you had to analyze something every <laughs> time somebody said it or every time you were going to say something there was like a little pregnant pause and like are they going to call us in and have another nervous break it's that's not spooky. worth it don't you understand it yeah. isn't worth it so we're now going through a little bit of culture shock over yeah. the fact that here we got people who are enlightened and and who realize the audience wants to be entertained and have a good time, and they're not going to jump all over our backs about that. You're a little rusty, huh? Of course, if yeah. we don't give the call letters enough, they'll probably jump on us about <laughs> that. So, W-I-O-D, W-I-O-D. Hey, I'm on I-O-D. There you go. Uh, I-U-D? 
I U D. Yeah. yeah. W I U D. Okay. Well, you guys have a great day. Okay. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Boy, was he alive? Well, and he was. And... He was. He was very good, and he had a very good point. Yes, he did. As it turned out, he did. He was right. Oh man, we got to break early for an EBS test. Boy, they got us coming and going every which way here, don't they? <laughs> You just want us to, like, sit in a corner over there and we'll just <laughs> shut up? Is that what you want? EB, and you can just keep hitting one card after another. I mean, we don't want to interfere with whatever's going on over here, okay? We didn't come in to mess anybody up. Now, we did one of those last week. I think they should be in a different day part this week. Yeah, they were on yeah. Friday we had an EBS yeah. test. How come we got another one on Monday? To, they'll always be in a different day They're supposed part. to rotate. Yeah. Somebody else can do it this so week. So tell uh, whoever put that on there to rotate on this, okay? <laughs> okay, let's go to Lighthouse Point. Hello. Hello, Neil. Uh-huh. Good to speak to you again. I called you a couple times earlier on earlier in the morning. Uh, you mentioned Freeway and Spigot. Yeah. I just happened to have a couple copies of it. Well, we can't play it. You can't? No. Uh, the only way we could play it is if uh, I had somebody called Don Imus at WNBC and there was somebody up there as producer and they gave us permission to play it. Okay, cause which, I, is, which is possible because yeah. they let us play the Casey Kasem thing, which came yep. from their engineer up there, That's right. and they have no problem with it. So maybe they're mellowing in their old age. Because if you would want it, I'd send it down to you. Well, we'll check it out. Yeah, you know, Johnny Dark might be able. Yeah, to Yeah, we'll do see if Johnny good. Dark can intercede on our behalf. Yeah, he He's a real I buddies mean. with Imus. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, what I'll do is I'll slave another copy of it and slave. I'll uh, send it down to you. Okay, we appreciate Anything it. Anything else? Because uh, I have a whole bunch of your old tapes. Really? You know what I was thinking the other day? Do you remember we were talking on Friday? Somebody wanted to hear um, I Want to Be Don Johnson. Is yeah. That thing Stan used to play. Right. And Marlon Bailey has totally shined us since we came over here, which figures, I guess, because uh -huh. he was buddies with Paul Lyle. Yeah. I guess that, <laughs> that speaks for itself. But anyway, um, uh oh, here, oh, I thought Nick was going to write another message. He's face lit up like a <laughs> when pinball machine Lyle? when I said Paul Lyle. Yeah. But anyway, I'm, Stan, I'm sure, must have that. Well? My old buddy Stan. I'm not convinced. Sure, because he's got a whole bunch of stuff, and he's not on the air anyway. So he got after all the stuff that we gave him. Yeah. Right. Everything. Even re reluctantly, very often, but we <laughs> gave him a bunch of stuff. The least he could do is let us borrow some of that stuff till he gets another job. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. What I'll do, Neil, is I'll slave some of the old stuff, and I'll yeah. send it down to you. Yeah. Slave it. <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. Point of phrase. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a good speaking to you, and I enjoy listening to you each day. Okay. And you and the bird take care now. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Bye, bye. I like, bye. That. I like bye -bye. that radio talk. That's that was neat. What's that? A slave it. Yeah, he's going to slave it. Yeah. It's radio jargon. No, it's not. There, nobody in this business ever uses that expression. That's true, okay? but that is. But he thinks it is. That's right. But that is technically he's correct. But nobody ever says that. You're right. <sighs> Boy, I'm, I'm getting, like, exhausted from the show. It's only Monday, and I'm worn out. What? From all this huzzerai that's going on here. <laughs> uh, we got a mobile on three. Hello. Hello there. You're on WIOD, sir. Is this WIOD? <laughs> this is WIOD. That's correct. I got to tell you, Neil, uh, I've been traveling around with these baked audio cassettes in my console of the van, and I listen. Your audio Cassette I, is aching. No, can you listen to this? Yeah, that's a Godfather that's thing. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear it. I hear it. Remember that? Yeah. Great show. Turn it off, sir. Remember that guy Neil? Yeah. Used to be on AM. Yeah, and then he was on FM, and then he got released uh, to Freedom again. Right. He broke great out. Show. Great show. Yeah, yeah. Did you notice that cack? What do you mean it was a great show? What the hell does that mean? Oh, no, I said it's a great show. Oh. I listened to it over and over. I and thought over. you said, oh, that particular show. I got to tell you. Well, now that particular show was good because I happened to be on there and I think we had a little dueling popes there. Oh, yeah. And I happened to <laughs> star that particular day. <clears throat> yeah, I remember that very you know, well. You know what I remember? And I was reminiscing with somebody the other day. No, what do you remember, uh, sir? I remember the day the bird called you up, the day he got canned. Yeah. Or the day following he got canned. Boy, I'd forgotten all and about that. that whole week and contract yeah. talks and contract disputes. and. I forgot about that. You're right. Ah, yeah. Those were the days, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Got uh -huh. fired from uh, the a the FM, I and Z. Yeah. yeah, it's funny, though. I tell you, you know, you, you may feel like you're a little gun shy, but... Uh, I don't feel gun shy. Yeah, now, it, see, that guy started it, and now you're picking it up, and well, it's no, like I'm starting an ugly rumor, and it's like a brush fire on, turning into a forest fire. It, it's working on any station you go to. Right. It works on any Only station. one thing I want to tell you, I am bitterly, and I'm not joking about this, I am so disappointed at the mail... Because obviously there are a whole bunch of IOD listeners who didn't listen to me before, and they're listening now, or at least mm -hmm. some of them are. 
in addition to which, you know, some of the other people who had not sent a check for the Camillus House, and I went through two or three times on Friday, went through this big song and a dance, and you would have thought today... Didn't I do a Thursday, too? Mm -hmm. I think so. Thursday think and so. Friday. You'd have thought we'd have gotten in, you know, five, six hundred bucks for the Camillo side. They got one stinking check for ten dollars here. Mm. What kind of response is that? Is this, is this a brain-dead cheapskate audience? What can I say? We'll find yeah, out, we'll I guess, won't out. we? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, listen, I want to get you depressed. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Neil, and I'm going to continue to listen to these great old shows and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you a little. Uh, yeah. Now you don't want to. You don't want to put any new ones on there, do you? Well, I'll tell you, I haven't run some tapes in a while. Uh, I sent. Uh, I sent uh, six hours to KC to my brother-in-law, which uh, he's used and sent back and said send more. Yeah. yeah. But, well, that's uh, great. It's fun. What can I say? Okay. Keep up the good work and. Uh, Geez, I'm looking forward to that EBS break. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Just what, what time we did needed. you say it was on WIOD? On WIOD at 1259. Have a great day, pal. 1259. Bye-bye. <laughs> In fact, what we ought to do is have the listeners keep their own logs now at home. Remember how we used to have them sure. keep a log for when people used to show up like Gary Lawrence uh -huh. and uh, Rose Folger? Sure. Well, we don't have, we can't see the outside. That's we can't right. see the parking lot. No Because we're like closed in here. Mm -hmm. They did that on purpose. Yeah. So we can't see when, uh, like, Mike Disney shows up, which he is back today looking tanned and fit and ready for sure a real is. brawl. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and we're ready to give him one. No, everything is great. We just have a few little minor things to iron out. That's right. And uh, they better do it right. Okay, it's 12 minutes <laughs> before 1. I think what we ought to do, if we got that EBS test, we ought to do this break a little bit early. So we come back, we might have, like, 20 or 30 seconds to speak to the people. I mean, let's get serious, Aren't okay? Aren't they supposed to be in different the thing day that, parts? What really gets me, you know, we what gets me upset week. is when he starts playing those Alan Courtney promos, I can't, you know, <laughs> I mean, I've got a pretty good sense of humor, but let's not get carried away. Okay, it's 11 before 1 at WIOD. WIOD. 1252 at WIOD. I should give the address again if you want to send a check-in for the Camillo's house. We're coming up on Thanksgiving in just a couple of weeks, ne uh, right? Week next week. Week and a half. Mm -hmm. And then the Christmas and New Year will be following right on the heels of that. And, we're, you know, we do our damnedest every year, all through the year, but especially this time of the year, to raise money for the Camillus House. And I'm just flabbergasted. And I can't believe it that the mail here today, I mean, this, this can't be the mail, okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe tomorrow there will be a mountain of mail and we'll be surprised. Because we don't want to call these people cheapskates. But no matter what it is, if it's 5 or 10 bucks or 100 or 500 whatever you can afford, and it's all tax-exempt, just make the check out to Camillo's House and mail it to a Camillo's House Care Neil Rogers, WIOD, Miami, 33141. And I also have a feeling that the post office in this, in this part of town is totally out to lunch. <laughs> I mean, there's mail that arrives here with, with postmarks from days and days ago. And I just, you know, we're going to have to have an investigation of the North Bay Village post office. Wow. If there is such a thing. Yeah. They got their own post office in North Bay Village or is it like part of Miami? Like Lemon City. We'll check it out. Okay, we got a call from the Bahamas. Hello. Hi, Neil. Hi. Is this your first Bahamas call since you've been back? You're our very, you're our virgin Bahamian caller on WIOD. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but anyway. Listen, we, I am not in the Bahamas right now legally. I am in West Palm Beach, but we live in the Bahamas. <laughs> but listen, now, we just did a boat call. Man, these Palm Beach people will figure out more ways no, to get no, on no, first. No, no, no. You know what? It's incredible. They don't use the line at all, and then as soon as they get on, man, it's like, put us on right ahead of everybody. No, it's okay. It's just no, a little listen, joke. No, listen. I understand. We just delivered a boat from the Bahamas to Palm Beach, and then we're flying back. Great. So you have to, we, we do live there, and I just wanted to let you know how glad we are to have you back on AM. We missed you terribly because, of course, you know, we can't get any FM in the Bahamas. Well, I don't, I don't blame them, yeah. Now, well, does WIOD come in in the Bahamas? Yes, very mm. well. Are you well, serious? Well, only after sunrise and before sunset. Well, that's okay. That's right. why I like being on midday. That's we don't have to worry well, about that, pattern change or any that of that, you know. You. That allows us to hear you again, and we missed you terribly while you were gone. What is, what is Steve doing out there gesticulating in the hallway, man? Something's this ought to be on. a law against that. Something's happening. Yeah, there's something going on out there, and they're pointing. Oh, it must be the pizza people. <laughs> uh, people with food yeah, out there the in the hallway. We know it. Yeah. All the yeah. upper-level management people are out there eating our food, probably. Uh -huh. Go ahead, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't know if we were allowed to call if we hadn't listened to Ernie on Saturday. Oh, yeah. Listen, in fact, all, all his, all his, his all whole audience has called already. <laughs> Well, I didn't hear him, but I did hear a rumor that... There were three that, of them. I heard a rumor that um, next week his show is on the sex life of oatmeal. Yeah. Is mm -hmm. that true? Well, you shouldn't be letting stuff like that leak out, if you know what I mean. Oh, okay. That's true. Glenn, 
Yeah. We love you. Thank you. You're very good. Don't listen to all those other calls. Oh, I don't. I okay, don't. Good. Okay, you have a great day. Listen, one, I, yeah. I, I'm, not allowed to, I'm not allowed to say hi to Dennis and Lincoln, am no, I? No, you sure aren't. Oh, okay. Well, thanks anyway. Say goodbye. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Boca, hello. Boy, what I have to wait through is incredible. I know. Do you want me to put you on hold? No, please, please. We could Listen, you could be on hold during the WYOD EBS test, okay? Well, that sounds like a thrill, but... It would be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, sir. Yeah, but I'd rather... When you just... hear, and when you hear that 60-cycle tone, it'll make you think, <laughs> make you feel like you're listening to the Sandy Payton show, okay? Oh, my God. Listen, <laughs> I, just, I just have... Please. Glenn, please, let me get in a word here before... Go ahead. You've right. got two minutes and 48 seconds and counting, sir. Okay. That, I feel uh, like that mentioned... promo that Steve does with that old bag. Yeah. you got 30 seconds, ma'am. Yeah, while well, you're mentioning Steve, please don't let him in on your show. Okay. I mean, he is, uh, you know, just... <laughs> God, is he horrible. He is... No, yeah. he's not horrible. He's been real nice to me since I've come here. I don't know why. He must be up to something, but... Yeah, because he likes it that you're on before him, and he's going to get a lot of people... No, I'm serious. He's been very friendly. I mean, yeah. look... You have to put certain things behind you if you're going to work with people. And, you know, holding grudges and carrying all of that stuff is pointless. Now, probably in a week or two we'll be brawling again, but let's give it time. Yeah, know? well, don't put him behind you because I... No, I understand. Yeah. I would never do that. Yeah, Trust serious. Me. But one more thing i got to say before, and, uh, you know, I'll take it up with him on his show because, you know, he... But That's one right. More thing. Say it right to his face, sir. Right, right straight to that face. Have the you... balls to say it right to his face. Uh, well, it's not... <laughs> I get too carried away. But uh, I have news <laughs> that uh, yes. there's going to be a new melting pot. Really? Yeah, it's going to be in North Miami Beach for all those. Is I live there, but I work up in Boca, so that's why I'm calling from Boca. But very excited. I was at the Kendall melting pot and uh, told, I don't know what the manager's name was. I said I hadn't heard the spot for the Lake Worth one. I think they're closed. And he just got all hysterical. He he took his banana, went to the back room, and <laughs> made a call. Yeah. He told me I was wrong, and I, you know. And then no, he, they're not closed. No, no, they're not. But they no, have the for only, a while. The only weren't. reason, wait a minute. The only reason yeah. that we stopped mentioning them for a while, they couldn't figure out if they were in West Palm Beach or Lake Worth, and they were having like the two management people up there a big brawl over where they really were, and they went and they got all these maps. And they went through a big... <laughs> well, it sounds good anyway. I don't, I don't know what yeah. their story is, but they're still open. They're doing great. Right. Well, the, the, the reason he told me was that that um, FM, your FM station, couldn't get up to West Palm Beach, so the people who owned that one didn't want to advertise. S sir, can I tell you something? Yeah. Not only did that station get up to West Palm Beach, before they even opened, I got a letter from the manager of that store thanking me for all the people who were coming and knocking on the door, asking when they'd be open, who heard it on my show. So, you know, the stories change, and... People like to ride the wave of success or whatever, but they'll be okay. Right. And, and Paul and Dana will straighten them out. Yes, we'll send Steve up there. That'll do it. <laughs> and have him drag his banana through that. Okay. <laughs> well, listen, I think we'll pass on that. Listen, have a wonderful day, sir. Yes, good luck. Bye-bye. Uh, Boy, just <laughs> good comment. emotional here, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Or an emotional basket case. Okay, listen, the WIOD EBS test is coming up next. This is one of the highlights of our broadcast <laughs> week. Then the news, and we'll be back at 105 or... Give or take five or ten minutes yeah. on 610 WIOD. 106 at WIOD. I made a mistake, ladies and gentlemen. We have a major correction. We have two $10 checks for Criminal's House Day. Isn't that incredible? Wow. And one, and it looks like the handwriting of somebody is about 100 years old, and it's addressed to Roger the Lodger. So Roger opened it, thinking it was for him. <laughs> and here it's a check for Camilla's house. Boy, some of you people out there, man, some of you who are like on oxygen now, as we begin our last hour, the pizza should be here any minute, so it ought to work out great. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. In the meantime, we lost some people during the news, one in the Dade at 751-WIOD. And the Palm Beach lines, again, are dead. I don't even know if I want to give the Palm Beach numbers because it seems like every call we take on those lines mm -hmm. is like a little song and a dance attached to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. There's some little game, like it's a mobile phone. Oh, look at that. That looks like our food from Flora's, right? Well, that pizza Here it is. looks like she's got a lot more than a pizza. Sure does. She's got enough food there for the Chinese army. Oh, my. Let me help her. Yeah. Boy, look at him move like a maniac. Now, I've never seen him move that fast since I've known him. All right, now just relax. Don't get all bent out of shape now. And Steve probably is uh, going to be on the way down the hall, too. Feed Steve in there, okay, because otherwise he gets all emotional. Uh, yeah, all we want is just the one cheese pizza, and you can take all that other good food for the whole staff. Yeah, Isn't what's great? in the bags? Boy, they if they don't love us two. here now, what is in there? Sodas. Sodas? Sodas. Well, I got two here, so we can put those in a fridge. Yeah. 
We might have enough sodas for the whole week if uh, <laughs> some people can keep their fingers out of the refrigerator. Boy, this smells what? great. Eggnog? No, I'll pass on that. And paper plates? Well, why are you sticking the mic into the paper plate? Now, that was interesting. <laughs> what, I yeah, like in the, the paper sound. plate? Yeah, I like the sound. No, no. We have What's that? Here. Yeah. Oh, no, we're, I'm telling you, we eat very antiseptically, and we clean it up, and so far, Mitch hasn't hit us with a banana. So far. And I'll take some of that newspaper so I can put it underneath so we don't get any grease or anything uh, unruly. Just one section of uh, USA Today, which is very good for that, by the way, too. <laughs> soaking up a grease. Although Flores is not greasy anyway. It's incredible. Yeah. We thank them again. And what's all that other stuff? There's sodas and there's another pizza. Okay, thank you, Carmine. You guys continue to be just too good to be true. Now, don't, oh, don't get that mung. Oh, gee. Oh, that was maniac. Close. That was close. And you got a little oil on the thing there. Yeah. Yeah, see, we don't monkey around. We get When we want food, we get it in here. We're not some kind of like Outrageous. subhuman douchebags. Okay, look at the size of that slice. Careful. Okay, let's go back to the calls while Steve continues to uh, gorge himself silly here. Now, isn't this good? <laughs> see, so you knew there was excited. a good reason for us being here, and that's to get fed. <laughs> the staff already oh, loves us, so man. They're, they're in love with us because we can get fed. We may not have any audience, but we don't give a damn about that. As long <laughs> as we eat. Deerfield, hello. Hi, Neil. Hi. Glenn, how you doing? Fine. Great. I'm um, glad to hear you're getting a little bit surly again, Neil. Yeah, I well, you know, the first week it was kind of a little honeymoon, <laughs> and I wanted to be on my best behavior. Now we're going to kick some serious ass. You Good. know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Get get everybody's blood up out mm. there, you know? Boy, it is good. Uh, no disrespect intended towards April Wortham, but I really miss Glenn's news. Now, are well, you serious? He's right Glenn is going to teach April how to butcher the names and how to do the news <laughs> the right way, you know. I mean, Glenn's right up there with uh, Dennis Miller's Weekend Update, you know? Yeah, yeah it was that sort of that genre of news, you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, which I, I saw something on Saturday Night Live, I don't know if you guys watch it, but he had the greatest joke. He said that uh, Bush chose Quail as his running mate, so he, he thought it was the best insurance he could get against any assassination attempt. Yeah, <laughs> now, that's cute. <laughs> and true. And uh, I just wanted to mentioned to you i enjoyed the kids show friday it was good yeah it was long well they weren't like kids they were yeah you're right they were kids well i mean but they I, were good i called up i just wanted to say something to you i think it was uh, uh early in the morning you said something about well we're going to open the lines up here because we're not getting a lot of calls and then i called and man nick's great he says uh -uh, i'm sorry they're only taking high school hey are we taking high school calls and he wouldn't let me talk to you so i said hey i'm a student of life you know but uh yeah so um, I just wanted to know what you think about uh, Reagan here is now... Wait a minute. Who is that? Is that Bill Wyatt? Bill Wyatt. Looking in? What do you want? Scooter, you want a piece, you of, want pizza? A piece of pizza? Yeah, pizza. Ah. <laughs> he looks yeah, so As long disgusting. as you don't write any memo about it, you can have a slice. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Get into it. Yeah. Just dig in. Be our guest. Go ahead, ma'am. Don't let Bill uh, interrupt your no, conversation. It's okay. You, I'm sure you've seen all over the news Bush is up there fishing. I'm a little he's... worried he hasn't been wearing a life jacket. Now, wait a minute. Where are you going with the rest of that? I'm going to take it. No, no you're not. not. I'm going to have another no, slice of that. Call. No, there's another whole pie downstairs. Get out of here, you maniac. Go over and have uh, <laughs> Patty get you some pizza, will you? Okay. No, no, seriously. <laughs> give me just one more, and then you can take it. Oh, one more. Boy, the real reason he's in here, he's having a nervous breakdown because there's food in here again. You're not kidding me for a second, okay? Here you mm -hmm. go. Did right you see that here. look on his face? He did very antiseptically, although he almost had a major accident here a moment ago. But uh, he'll be all right. That's right. Mitch well, came in and gave him a look that would kill. I got excited. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. What were you saying? It's, I was concerned. I'm not trying to demean your no, call, no, but no, the food I... is here, and it's a hell of a lot more important. No, every, every time that I call you, I always get through when you guys are eating. I know. It's okay. Uh, I'm just a little concerned because Bush hasn't been wearing a life jacket up there when he's been fishing. Off Don't the be camp. talking about those kinds of things, okay? <laughs> Don't be talking not about the... Uh, that's right. It's not a joke. No, I'm worried. Seriously. That's okay. That was my first concern when Trust I saw him fishing. He jumped off the boat and into the water, and I'm like, holy crow, man. He doesn't well, have Well, if Quail water. ever becomes president, God forbid, then it'll be all the little kids, all the elementary school students can sit in on the cabinet meetings. We can have a hell of a time. Yeah, well. <laughs> we can all... We can have our cabinet meetings at Lionel Playworld. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Please. Well, listen, have a wonderful day. Thanks. It was nice to talk to you guys. And we'll talk to you later. Sound great. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Boy. Okay, now a couple of people disappeared while she was on there, which is okay, but it's good giving those numbers out just in case. In Dade, 751 WIOD, Miami, in Broward, 524 WIOD, 
Boca in Delray, 278-WYOD, and in Palm Beach, 655-WYOD, which got us four Great. WYODs right there. Excellent. 12 minutes after 1 on WYOD. Introducing Butch Beer, the first beer brewed for women by women. When you grab a Butch Beer, you're taking hold of the Billie Jean King of Beers. Fire brewed from the gushing waters of French Lake, Indiana. With Butch Beer, you've got a beer that goes down easy. Taste it, you'll know why it's our personal best. Go grab a Butch Beer and get an image. Go grab a Butch Beer at every scrimmage. Go grab a Butch Beer, it goes down quicker. Go grab a Butch, as good as any liquor. Butch Beer. Let everyone know you're more than just a woman. You're a gal who can take it like a man. Snatch a 12-pack off the shelf today and crack open a butch. Just ask any woman. On the whole, it's as good as any liquor. Go grab a butch beer that tastes your savor. Go grab a butch beer, it's tuna flavor. Go grab a butch beer, it goes down quicker. Go grab a butch, as good as any liquor. Butch beer. Strong enough for a man, but who needs one? Go for the gusto with a strapping belt of Butch beer. Sure, it costs a lot, but don't dicker on the price. Butch beer. Come and find the Butch flavor lickety split. Go grab a Butch beer and get an image. Go grab a Butch beer at every scrimmage. Go grab a Butch beer. It goes down quicker. Go grab a Butch as good as any liquor. Butch Beer, brewed by Anheuser-Busch, French Lake, Indiana. A division of Taiwan on Industries, Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. The next time you're eating out, order a Butch. Boy, this goes on forever, don't it? 117 at WYOD, the Neil Rogers Monday show, and our next call is in Miami. Hello. Hello. Is this, is this Neil Rogers? Yeah. Hi, Neil. How are you doing? Okay. What does Lickety Split mean? Just let's move along, sir. What was your uh, call about? My call was about... That I just wanted to know. Yeah. Good call, huh? That was great. Yeah, that's one of our friends. All three Dayline just went dead, by the way. 751-WIOD. Wow, look at that. What? <laughs> They're dead. Yeah, date is dead. Is that a revelation to you or something? <laughs> Boca, hello. Hello. Yeah. Neil. Yeah. Hey, you know, I wanted to ask you a question about uh, what, is, what is the career path of Glenn? I mean, where do you go after being Neil Rogers' sidekick? I mean, is he going off, spin off on his own show like the Jeffersons or something like that? No, or... he's going to retire. Well, I guess he'd probably need to retire after working with you for so long. But yeah. I mean, is that is, is that what all sidekicks aim for? Is just to retire on the on the massive earnings that you guys make? Well, I think it depends on the individual show. I think they're all different. But uh, you know, what could I do to top this? There's nothing, right? You can always replace Paul Schaefer on Letterman. Yeah. Yeah. The same. He's got the right hairdo. Well, you could do some albums like he has. You know, you <laughs> find yourself a group and do a couple uh, do a couple cuts. Oh, I could cackle on mm -hmm. record. Now that's. Uh, on, <laughs> can you imagine that on CD? <laughs> well, maybe that maybe Casey and the Sunshine Band could find some use for that. Mm-hmm. I get Casey Kasem on there too. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. I'll think about it. Yeah. Oh. I'm so okay. glad you asked. <laughs> well, have a great day. You too. Bye. Boy. What a call, huh? Oh, boy. 118 at WIOD, and we'll go to Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hi, is this 610 WIOD? You got it, sir. 610 WIOD. Well, hello, Neil. Depend on it. Hey, I just wanted to give you a call. Um, I live in Key West, but I am in Fort Lauderdale for the day. Mm -hmm. I'll admit it, not like that lady from the Bahamas there. You know, it's, um, I wanted to let you know, it's glad to hear you back on AM so I can get the signal down there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, so this is sort of like a call from the Keys, in other words, if, if, yeah. if we, uh... She was from the Bahamas yeah. by way of West Palm Beach, So and he's from the Keys by way of, um, Fort Carroll City or somewhere, yeah. Fort Lauderdale. Exactly. Uh -huh. And I do listen to you at work, which is great, so, although they would frown upon my, you know, being on hold for an hour and a half to talk with you. They so tell I'm them pretty... to mind their own business, okay? <laughs> yeah, but they do sign the paycheck. Oh. You know. And you're going to get Cliff O'Neill all hysterical at TWN. You played that Butch Beer thing. You know something? I have a letter in, in my pile of memos. It's not a letter. It's a copy of a article or a column or something in a TWN. If I can ever find it. Just a second now. Don't panic. Here it is. Boy. Dated 
dated uh, nothing. It doesn't even have a date on it. But anyway, it says, yes, they're at it again. Phobes Gallery, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's a big one of these um, crybaby song and a dance from people who have no sense of humor. There's nothing wrong with that parody. Nothing wrong with it at all. And if people can't laugh at themselves, like some of the people over at TWN and want to get uptight about everything and make everything a big crusade and a cause, then that's their problem. Well, I don't have any problem with it. Well, I, I agree with you. I, um, I had not heard the bit before, but I'm a gay person, and I think it's okay for you to, as a gay person to play it. That's good. If somebody was using it as a negative thing, that might be a little different, though. But how do you know they were doing that? Uh, I, just, just from what I read. Yeah. So... Well, don't always believe everything you read in the newspapers, okay? Well, as a journalist... Especially in the weekly news. Well, as a journalist, I agree with you. <laughs> they're, 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 still, they're still busy uh, blowing Bob Kunst's trumpet, if you pardon that expression. Uh -huh. and, I w you know, bringing him out of the closet all the time and making him into the big community leader. So th those guys over there just have got a lot... A lot to learn. Well, they can keep Bob Koontz, and so can Steve, for that matter. I agree. I don't want that person representing me. Uh-uh, no way, or no me. thank you. Yep. Get rid of them. Okay. And another one. <laughs> 21 past 1 at WIOD. You know, some of you don't understand. There are some things you can say, and there are some things you just, you know them, but you don't say them. Okay? Yeah. That was my second dump. Yeah. Yeah. Leave Alice alone, okay, sir? <laughs> Boy, this is so good, you know. Isn't it great? Just mm -hmm. the most unique, great pizza. <clears throat> it's not unique. It's like New York, legitimate New York style. That's why it's so good. Unique to this area, from what well, I know. Well, yeah, because most of the pizza area. here is from hunger. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> anyway, just about done eating. I have to pardon us, but there are some things that come first on this show, okay? And get those damn checks in the mail today, and let's, uh, let's, I, I just can't believe this mail. You would think, now, we didn't have any mail Friday or Saturday. Here it's Monday. Even on that godforsaken FM on Monday, we used to have a big stack yeah, of mail. That's true. And not only should it have been a big stack of mail today, but a lot of it should have been checks for the Camillo's house. And you people must think that's like a joke or something. You must think that it's a put-on. Because I think a lot of the people that are used to listening midday on this station are like in a coma. Oh, well. Look. You know what I mean? Beyond Ten stages beyond brain dead is what they are. Well... Now, we don't know if Paul Lyle is listening or not, but that's his problem. <laughs> okay, 122. Let's go to Hallandale. Hello. Allendale. Uh-huh, that's what it says. Oh, well, um, I'm from Dania, but, uh, well, you know, close enough, close that's enough. close enough. There are plenty of antiques in Hallandale, too. That's true, really. Especially now, uh, our good friends from Canada are down here. You know, it's yeah. unbelievable. Oh. Hey, did you know Stefano's back on Days of Our Lives, talking he's, from Rising from the Dead? He's back, and I heard that Marlene is coming back. Well, supposedly. I wonder if they'll bring back the old Roman, and then uh, Diana can run off with the, the new one. You it's know, just amazing. On these, one thing about the soaps, man, you got more lives than the ever ready cat. They just, you know, die off a couple of times and then they come back. That's right. Hey, Bird, um, I was wondering, are y'all still going to do the Christmas Eve special this year? No. Well, no? I don't think so. Oh, well. You know, all the bits, you mean? Yeah. And we had to leave a ton, uh, of, ton of those behind. Almost like a divorce, right? Yeah, Who you got it. what? Who got rats in our room? Uh, I left it behind. Did you? Maybe, we maybe, can always get another copy Yeah, of maybe we'll do something, but it won't be that. But oh, maybe, well, I'm sure whatever it is, it's yeah. going to be as good. And I promise I'll put in a check for the Camillo's house because y'all really do do, you know, a good cause there. Uh... Well, I'm just glad to, you know, y'all are back on, and it's good hearing your voice and everything. And uh, I just wanted to say I did listen in the way in the morning to that other station. We won't mention it. And he's starting to get feisty. Is he really? Yes. Well, that's great. He was ranting just a little bit. Hmm. About? I wonder where he got it. <laughs> that from. Okay, well, listen, have a wonderful day. <laughs> okay, you too, Neil. Boy, boy. Nice talking to you, boy, boy. 124 at WIOD. It's not that you got to twist my arm to uh, eat at any of the six, soon to be seven, Charhart locations. Distance dedication. And this one is about kids and pets and a situation that we can all understand, whether we have kids or pets or neither. It's from a man in Cincinnati, Ohio, and here's what he writes. Dear Casey, this may seem to be a strange dedication request, but I'm quite sincere, and it'll mean a lot if you play it. Recently, there was a death in our family. 
He was a little dog named Snuggles. But he was most certainly a part of... Let's come start again. From coming out of the record. Play the record, okay? Please. <clears throat> See, when you come out of those up-tempo damn numbers, man, it's impossible to make those transitions. And then you got to go into somebody dying. You know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for, but... Damn it, if we can't come out of a slow record, I don't understand it. Is Don on the phone? Okay, I want a damn concerted effort to come out of a record that isn't a f***ing up-tempo record every time I do a damn death dedication. Now, make it, and I also want to know what happened to the pictures I was supposed to see this week. It's a god last damn time, I want somebody who uses f***ing brain to not come out of a damn record... That is, uh, that, that's up-tempo, and I gotta talk about a f***ing dog dying. Boy, this is f***ing ponderous, man. Ponderous, f***ing ponderous. 129 at WIOD, and we're filling up the trash can, getting all our garbage out of the way. Now, you noticed Bill Wise came in here and made off with that pizza box? He sure did. Scott now, you know, you know why that is, don't you? Well, he was a little ups- nervous. Yeah, very. Yeah. Did you see the look on his face when he was looking? Ter- you didn't terrified. see it. Yeah. He had this terrified look through his face when he looked through the door and saw what we were doing. Yeah. So he came in and acted like, well, he wanted some, you know, and he'd be happy to take it. Get that pizza box out of the studio right now. <laughs> Disney's back. Get it out of there. He's going to go nuts. You know, last week he didn't seem to be concerned. No. Hey, listen, we're, we're having a good time, okay? Everything is fine. And if there are people who want to get all uptight and surly and bent out of shape over childish stuff, that's their problem, okay? See, one of the things that bugs me about people that build and design all these studios and they make them fine, but we're on radio, man. We're not on television. It's like that jackass Brian Gumble on the Today Show, which now I have to watch bits of that every morning because I get up to? early. Well, I watch a little bit of everything, okay? Cause not... And who's that broad on CBS in the morning? Man, she is so That's depressing a... looking. Kathleen? No, it's a Kathleen Sullivan? I don't know what her name is, but That's she like always gray hair? has... No, not gray hair. She's got dark hair, but she's always got this sour, depressing look on her face. Like she just either had a nervous breakdown or is about to have one. On CBS? Yeah, she's terrible. And then they got the guy with the glasses who... <laughs> You know, it looks like he's something out of... They got that New York mentality, okay? Mm-hmm. He looks like he should be doing the racing show with Harvey Pack on a sports channel or something. He doesn't make it on a morning show. Mm-hmm. Like Joan... Jo, what is her name? London? Joan no, London? London, yeah. See, she makes it because yeah. she's cutesy and housewife she and, uh, like, she's... That's, that's what the public wants. Yeah. Not some broad that's got that hostile nasty look on her face like she's got bad gas or something. That's Kathleen Sullivan. Oh, man, does she look bad. Well, anyway, so Bryant Gumbel, what the hell was I talking about with Bryant Gumbel? Oh, yeah, he's always... Well, we're here at Studio 3B. Well, who cares what studio it is? We don't care. Do you care? Well, Letterman does the same thing. We don't care about... Well, Letterman's (laughs) audience are all on drugs anyway. That's not the point. The point is... The average person doesn't give a damn about what studio you're in. And it's like here. It's what comes out of the speaker that people are interested in, not how the studio looks. You Listen, it's great working in beautiful studios, and this is brand new, magnificent. It's like a work of art. But the bottom line is, didn't we go through this on the AM over the other place? Mm-hmm. The bottom line is, how does it work? How does it sound? Not how does it look. This is a radio station for crying out loud. We're not on television, thank God. Well, Bryant does that. He thinks that he thinks that impresses people. Exactly, and nobody could give a flying hoot less. Okay, they don't care if it's Studio Three B. Then how does that mean? Why don't we make up a name for that? We're in Studio Two Z <laughs> at W I O D. Yeah, I mean, well, like it impresses somebody. They don't care about that. They just want to know what's coming through that goddamn speaker on their radio. That's all they care about. Now, does that mean he's on the third floor? I don't know. <laughs> For my part, he could be on the 80th floor and go to the window, okay, and have a little accident. I can't stand Brian Gumble. And he, he, first of all, he talks like a mile a minute, but now it's all, instead of shouting like he used to do when he was on the ball games, when he used to scream his guts out, now it's a real soft, and he's talking a mile a minute, but he always, like, sneers down at you, you know, like, mm-hmm. boy, I got a oh, lot yeah. of money, baby. Oh, and, yeah. You know, yeah. if you don't like it, you can stick it in your ear. He is on, nobody likes him. Everybody hates him. That's right. So how come he's on? 
<laughs> really? Do you remember during the Olympics and people oh, sure. were they were taking those surveys and the thing they hated the most was him? Yeah, well, obviously they love him. They even him. liked the Soviet basketball team better than they liked him. Obviously they love him at NBC, and the ratings on the Today Show are great. They you are? Know, they win. Well, yeah, because that first of all, that horrible show on CBS, like I said, you can't watch her in the morning. It right. would sour you for the whole day. And uh, ABC, I don't know what their story is, but she does all these insipid, like, housewife-type Interviews. Who did she have on this morning? She had um, Burt Reynolds. Oh, right. Lonnie Anderson. Lonnie Anderson. Yeah, who looks perception. really good now, by the way. What she the hell happened Florida. to her? Joan Lunda was yeah, in they Florida. Yeah, Joan Lunda was at some health spa here in Florida. Mm -hmm. I saw that. One of those second. massage parlors or something. I don't know what it was, but they were having a hell of a time. <laughs> Well, I'm personally, I'm into the Three Stooges early in the morning. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try that tomorrow. <laughs> oh, boy. What what started that? Oh, it was the thing about the pizza. Oh, yeah. You know, just relax. Every Look at how clean it is in here, man. You could eat off the floor, which is probably what they're yeah. going to tell us to do starting tomorrow. That's an idea. April Wortham has a WIOD news update. It's 134. OD. 137 at WIOD. Now, what, what does that mean we can't call out from here? What is that all about? Did you ever, ever in your life hear of a radio station where you cannot call out <laughs> from the studio? None of these lines dial out. They do? They do? They don't. They don't. Nick says they don't, and Roger says they do. And Roger dials out on here all the time in the morning. <laughs> so somebody's giving me a crock of BS, okay? <laughs> Somebody wants this to be isolated in here like we're cut off from the outside world. And what the hell does the operator want anyway? We're in the middle of a show. What does she want? Find out what she wants. Call her up say, what the hell do you want? <laughs> Just that way. <laughs> oh, really? That's great. Right in the middle of the show. 22 till 2 at WIOD. Man, I just don't believe this. Do you? And people are going to say, see, they've only been on this their sixth day and already he's belly aching. Well, of course, because in the beginning is when you've got to, like, paper train everybody. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Uh, that's what we're doing. Like paper that little training. charade that went on here with the pizza box. I mean, who's kidding who? Well, they're just terrified that we're going to... See, give me that thing. What is that little paper for? You gotta, you're a slob. You really are. I am not. You hung around with Capri to too I long. You become not. a slob. Oh, come on. You've got to clean up your garbage so that when they I come do. in here, it looks like we're making an attempt to keep the place clean. I am. The place looks they're great. They're not going to tolerate the kind of mess and sloppiness we had over there. The only reason that went on is because Rose was just as big a slob as we were and used to come in and participate in the feast. Yes. Daily. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. In fact, very often he would show up extremely early, <laughs> and just coincidentally, the food would show up like minutes later. Wasn't that something? And it was like so... two, three minutes after yeah. he'd walk in the door, the food would be right behind. And him. it was so odd because it was like before nine o'clock in the morning. Now we had a reason because we had been up since a, a brutal hour at four thirty. But these people like would come and in. We have a reason hours. now. It's because first of all, I don't eat breakfast. I'm not going to start eating breakfast. I don't like breakfast. And people who really know their nutrition tell you that eating breakfast is a bad idea to begin with because yeah. it takes away all your energy to digest right. it. You've slept all night. Your body has recharged itself. Now get out there and do your thing and, you know, wait till yeah, noontime. Remember that thing they used to say, breakfast is the most important meal? Well, of course. And the ones who used to say it were the ones that were selling breakfast cereal, yeah. of course. Well, it is, but not first thing in the morning. I your mean, when you get up in the morning, day. do you open up your cupboard and take out 37 boxes of total or whatever they do in those... In those ridiculous uh, cereal ads, have you seen that? And the boxes just come pouring out, <laughs> you know, and you just sit there and you don't have time to go to work because you've got to eat 37 boxes of total. That's not what I do. And in let the me morning. tell you, after you eat 37 boxes of some of those fiber uh, cereals, you're not going <laughs> anywhere out of the house, okay, the rest of the day. Well, see. Trust me. Yeah. Okay, let's go to uh, Deerfield. Hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Good. Uh, I had to call you. I'm a. Uh, WIOD listener for a long, long time, but I did listen to you uh, years ago about 10 o'clock at night before I went to bed. Yeah. And I missed uh, hearing you and uh, lost wherever you went or whatever, but I'm happy that you're there. Great. And I think Bird is great. Thank you, sir. Yeah, good combination. And uh, another thing is I'm from Rochester. Ah, uh, uh, now we're getting uh, to the heart yeah. of the call. Yeah. Uh, and he said something I, nice I about, about you. So just... And I do go up there every year, of course, and I did go to Bob and Don's had a had to make my trip there, you know, and I had a couple of hots. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, Don was, uh, my father was, was his godfather. Really? Yeah, yeah. And, uh... I'll be damned. Yeah, I knew him, you know. I'm really controlling myself. A few times in my life, you know. 
Yeah. Is quite a nice guy. I haven't seen him. Well, they don't have anything to do with it anymore, so you don't have to worry about that. This new guy is in there, and he's really doing a number on it. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. And uh, let's see, another thing. Uh, Ernie, I heard heard Ernie uh, Saturday, and he really thinks you're something else. Yeah, well, of course, he the thinks federal law else. prohibits that we say what What it does is. that mean? Yeah. Well, he thinks, I think he thinks you're the dean. Oh, I see. The dean? No, don't say that, sir. <laughs> that expression has departed from oh, WIOD, really, okay. okay? I'm sorry. Yeah. You are a WIOD listener. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've been brainwashed with yeah. all those trite cliches and all sure those have. ridiculous cornball slogans, you know. Okay, listen, have a great day, and I'll see you down and Bob. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The dean. <laughs> Let's go to Boca. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, Neil, this is Ted from Boca. How are you? Okay, Ted. I've been listening to you for about a year now, and I want to welcome you back to Midday Live. Thank the you. The only thing that bothers me is why you pick on all the New Yorkers. I've been here I've been here about a year. Wait, wait, I... wait, wait, wait. What do you mean I pick on all the New Yorkers? When did you ever hear me pick on all I... the New Yorkers? You, you, you keep saying we're arrogant, we're slime, and you know... No, no, I didn't say all the New Yorkers that. are like that, Ted. I said most of them. Uh, <laughs> Including you. <laughs> you jackass. <laughs> you notice he had to give his name. Oh, yeah. Nobody else gives their name. We don't do names on the show. Everybody's content, but he's got to be Ted from Boca or wherever the hell he was from. Go back where you came from, pal. Go back to the Bronx. Somebody wrote me a long, convoluted letter about that fight on Geraldo and about how it was contrived. Mm-hmm. And I agree. I believe it. it I think it was all well set up. Be. If you watch it again, and by the way, here's the tape I brought it. We've got to send it back to those the boat people that brought it. Yeah. I don't mean boat people, the yeah. ones that came in their boat. <laughs> and I did watch it. And if yeah. you watch it often enough, you'll see that when he when he starts grabbing that guy's neck, it's, mm-hmm. it's like professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so obvious the way he's doing it is so fake. And the other guys start looking around like they're looking for a cue. That was another one of those stage deals, okay? Well, Phony is the day is long, Geraldo. You see, it works right into what these type of shows want. The publicity he got was incredible. And a great part of it is that I'm sure it wasn't intended, but he got in the middle of it and got his nose broken, yeah. which really made it all worthwhile. Which got him uh, the cover of Newsweek last week. Yeah. Is that incredible? On the week of the presidential election, Mm -hmm. they had Geraldo on the cover. Well, I guarantee you there were a lot more people who were interested in Geraldo getting his nose bashed in than uh, cared about Bush or Dukakis, okay? Right. And I can't say I blame them. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to Miami next. Hello. Hello. Neil, I just wanted to say I started listening to you last Monday. I've never heard you before. You're kidding. Never. That's astounding. Of course, I was painted by uh, some comments by Steve Kane. Yeah, well, don't let Kane brainwash you now, sir, okay? You have to take everything he says with ten grains of salt. Uh, I, I usually do. I don't agree with him all the time, but I thought I like this format also of issues, and uh, I'm giving your format a chance. I like WID. I listen from the time I get in the morning to the time I drive home. But uh, I just want to say I'm really beginning to enjoy you and the bird. It's, uh, it's a different format, and... <laughs> <laughs> he keeps you happy all day, I can see. No, no, not true, sir. <laughs> You're very wrong about that. Well, uh, the other thing, too, I was noticing when I drive home, I still see a bunch of boards up uh, still yeah. advertising you on the other station. Are they ever going to come down? I don't know, man. I guess maybe they don't have, they can't afford to take them down. Uh, well, I don't know what their the, story is, but I wish, the I wish they would take them down because I don't want my name associated with them anymore, so I wish they would take them the hell down. Uh, they're still up there, big as life. Yeah, I see them. Okay. Good luck. Congratulations. I hope to listen to you a lot more. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now, see, he's a little bit tentative, you can tell. Oh, yeah. He doesn't know whether to scream or eat three bananas, but he'll get used to it. This is different, okay? It's not like Steve's show, and it's not like Mike's show. It's a totally different kind of show, which is good. Because one of the raps, and it's not a bum rap, it's a real rap about talk stations in this country, and this is part of the reason that so many of them went down the tubes, is they'd have the same kind of talk on all day long. Like W. Snooze. Exactly. And you'd hear the same guests and the same Mm -hmm. topics and the same callers. And and by the time you get through, man, with about 15 hours of that, you're ready to blow your brains out. Mm Mm-hmm. And they have chron- we have chronic callers, but there's also such a thing as chronic guests yeah. in this format. And speaking of that, Judy Wilson is going to be on with Steve today <laughs> with Stuart Johnson, the defender of Deadbeat Dad, speaking of chronic. But uh, Steve will get over it. He'll loosen up a little bit and get rid of some of those contrived debates and start, uh, you know, coming into the real world. Now, listen, here's a call you're going to love in Boca. Hello. Hello. Yes. Let me say this much. The reason you got a $10 check for Camilla's house is li- listen to your audience. Listen to who's calling you. 
Just listen to the quality. See, I wonder, I wonder how we raised all those thousands of dollars with the same audience on two other radio stations, huh? Must have been an accident. Then the, you mean there's something the matter with your radio station? And no, they, I didn't say that. There's something yes, wrong. Did. How, how much you did you send? Did. How much did you send, you old bag? I knew you would say that. How much did you send? How much do I send? No, how much did you send to the Camillo Sound? What I could afford. How much? Would you like to know, really? Yeah. Ten dollars. And I got it? No, I didn't send it to you. Oh, yeah, I, right. Like, you, the check is in the mail, huh? Who the hell are you kidding? Check is in the mail. Yeah. See, there's one of the old bags who can't stand the fact that we don't want her. We don't want anything to do with you, and I bet your feet smell too, okay? And I bet your teeth are just rotting in a glass somewhere right now as we speak. You haven't changed the pollen in probably six months. You disgusting, filthy, subhuman bag. <laughs> but turn it up a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, turn it up a little bit louder. <laughs> like, we don't raise money for charity. We've raised thousands and thousands of dollars for Camilla's House. I am proud to say, because it's my favorite local charity. And we've only been here for six days, so the fact that this brain-dead audience hasn't responded yet the way that we had hoped, that's the way it goes, okay? They'll come around when we start flagellating them and beating them over the head. Right? That's yes. what it took every place else. That's right. But she sent her $10 but didn't send it to me. Who the hell are you kidding? That's that's like saying I gave it the office. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Likely story, ma'am. You filthy, disgusting, miserable old bitch. <laughs> Everything that's wrong with this town is in that woman's body, okay? <laughs> Everything that's wrong with this area, she represents. She's the epitome of the creeping death, that big, dark cloud that hangs over this tropical paradise. Uh, we don't want casinos. They're going to disrupt our lifestyle. They'll take away all the space at the early bird. <laughs> you can take your early bird, lady, and stick it where the moon don't shine, okay? You vulgar, disgusting, subhuman, cretin bitch. It's 12 minutes till 2 at <laughs> WIOD, and let's go to Pembroke Pines. Hello. Neil. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? Okay, pal. How's everything? Great. <laughs> How you like your new station? Great. Yeah? Yeah. Do you know who this is? No. This is Carlos. Carlos? Yeah, you know. Been on your show a couple times. Oh, my God. It's that Carlos who shined us, yeah. <laughs> shined us because I wasn't going to have a party at my house for his friends. What? I, I didn't shine you. Yeah. How's everything? Everything's great, Carlos. You sound pretty depressed. No, I'm great. I'm, I'm doing real good. Carlos must not be getting any these days. Is that it, Carlos? <laughs> no, I'm... Doing great, huh? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. good. Yeah. So, do you still live at the same place? Still live in the same house, that's correct. Yeah? Yeah. Same number? Or did you change your phone same number? Same phone number. Everything's the same. Really? Oh, yeah. okay. Because I was going to call, but I didn't know. Okay, well, listen, but like next Shavuos, I'll be looking for your call. <laughs> okay? Okay. Okay, take care of yourself, Carlos. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Boy, he sounded really depressed, didn't he? Yeah. Probably being on after that other caller. <laughs> I don't think so. The one that's ripping our audience because they're not as intellectual and brilliant as she is. But it's interesting. She's listening to the show, isn't it? Every word. Yeah, hanging on every word. Who the hell are you kidding, honey? You every think you're word. fooling somebody? You got that speaker up so loud you're getting vibrations that even the Beach Boys never got. Every day. Unbelievable. Always have to attack, don't they? Always have to attack because we're not doing what she wants. We're not sitting here boring everybody terminally talking about the same old ten talk show topics that have been rehashed and redone over and over and over again until they're coming out of your ears, okay? That's it. That's what she was upset about. But we love you, too. <laughs> it's 10 till 2 at WIOD. A day. 154. Do you realize we're almost out of here today? And I it's know. like we just sat down. We're I, just getting exactly. going. Exactly. This in is... fact, I wish that woman would have called much earlier in the show, because I would have loved to have had a much lengthier conversation with her. You know what I'm saying? The one who will never listen to the show again. Oh, no. Because we have such a low class of people. Like all those young people that called on Friday that were so terrible, the criminals of tomorrow. That was a great bunch of callers. It was a great bunch of callers. And unique and unusual. Yeah, so drop dead, lady. Leave us alone. Miami Beach, hello. <laughs> Neil. Yeah. How are you? Great. Oh, boy, I'm sorry I had to uh, follow a call like that lady. Well, you know, she's out there. She probably didn't have enough Metamucil to last one more day, and uh, she's surly about it, you know. Yeah, it's a tough act to follow. But anyway, um, did you catch uh, West 57th Saturday night? No. Oh, they had peace on Paul Hardy. Really? Yes. Yes, they did. Is and? He, is yeah, he... he ran a piece on how he uh, run the show, starting from 
comes in 3 o'clock in the morning. He finishes up about 7. He well, comes... He's got a studio in his own house. Well, he goes out to... He goes out to the yeah, ask all kinds of questions in his background. And... Yeah. Well, he's not here anymore. I'm sure. He's gone. But to see and he ain't would... coming back. But to see him, you wouldn't think he's 70 years old. Yeah. Well, well when, you got, when you got that much money, sir, I guess, uh, you know, it's not hard to look good. I just thought I would mention it to you because I didn't hear anything. No, I didn't see it. Oh, you didn't see it. I hope the people at WNWS saw because they're thinking about putting him on. Oh, no. Oh, we sure hope so. Oh, no. Yep. I mean, that, that can really kill it right there. You got it. That's right. So you're not going to go to the game, huh? No. No. Oh, boy. Oh, well. Well, have a good day. Okay. All righty. Boy, he sounded really depressed, didn't he? He sure did. Wow. Good day. <laughs> Maybe that'll cheer him up a little bit, huh? Cheers me up. Fort Lauderdale, hello. Hello? Yeah. Glenn? Yeah. Hi, uh, just a few recommendations on your show. Yeah. I think you should give the call letters a few more times. <laughs> and we could use the time. I, I, I always get lost and I never know where I am or what time it is, so if you guys could give the time a little more often. Okay, 155.59. Okay, 156. Great. Are you okay? Yeah, All and right. the only other thing was, I heard that they were going to replace Steve Kane with Call the Doctors. Do you know anything about that? <laughs> oh, boy, i got to get all the comedians here that just was before we get out of here. Let's go to ha Hallandale. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Is this Neil Rogers? Yes, sir. Uh, my, my girlfriend, she's on the other line. She listens to your show every day. Great. And now she got me started on it. We're, we're both here at, at my house now. We're listening to your what show. What did you say, sir? You're both airheads? Neil Rogers, you are the greatest! I know. <laughs> what are you doing with that phone, boy? It sounds like you're struggling with it. No, my cat plays with the cord a lot. Well, we don't want to get into that, sir. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, thanks a lot. Thanks a heap. Okay. Have a great day. Okay. You too, Neil. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Boy, she sounded like uh, somebody tickled her fancy. No kidding. You know what I'm saying? Boy, what was going on there? I think the cat was doing uh, something more than what he said. <laughs> God. Anyway, we're almost out of time here on a Monday, and we want to thank you, especially that very nice lady that called <laughs> about 15, 20 minutes ago and had all those wonderful things to say about the audience. I mean, we've been here a total of six days. What the hell do you expect, okay? I'm trying to goose these people a little bit, make them get off their butts. And by the way, while you're thinking about it now, get your checkbooks out and make out a check for 10 or 20 or 50 bucks for the Camillus House. And send it here Neil Rogers, W-I-O-D, Miami, 33141. The mail here is dreadful, okay? Mm, worse than you, you think that somebody... It is. I know. If, and we never I mean, thought we'd ever say the mail that. was like tons of mail, and we got no problem. There were just tons of checks that would come in for Camilla's house or when we did the So Far campaign. Sure. And uh, Zeta was not as good, but I mean, like this is, and I think this is evidence of the fact that during these hours... There is a large body of brain-dead people out there who need to be poked a little bit. A little bit? If you pardon that expression. <laughs> or profusely, as the case may be. Now, tomorrow we're going to be having the transvestite lesbian cross-dressing pygmies from Ethiopia on the show. <laughs> from Ethiopia. Do you believe that? She's got transsexuals again. <laughs> they are so desperate. I'm telling you, the day is coming when they're going to have a show. They'll have, the, they'll have a panel, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. And on the panel will be Donahue, Oprah, Sally, Geraldo, and Gary Collins, okay, who's pretty boring. And Regis? And they'll get them all in there. And No, not Regis. I like Regis. <laughs> and they get all these stiffs on there, and they'll have a big brawl. You know, somebody will say, well, I think your glasses suck, Sally. They're pretty yeah. stupid looking. You look like a moron. And then she'll start poking somebody in the ribs, and then Geraldo yeah. will come out, of course, and start a fist fight. Uh -huh. And there'll be a couple of Nazis in the audience who'll come out with the cross-dressing yeah. pygmies. And it'll be and on all the exactly, news. Exactly, it'll be on like all day. Mm -hmm. They'll have like an all day melee. 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 <laughs> Is it melee mouth? And that'll uh, be it. And I'm telling you, if they prom promote it ahead of time, they'll get like a 90 share. Absolutely. You notice how those things are always taped ahead of time so they have plenty of time to promo it? Oh, yeah. Like the contrived Geraldo mm -hmm. brawl. Mm hmm. Which and Wart Downey Jr. The affiliate stations were screaming for that show. Yeah, you bet. That show was supposed to air much later this Speaking month. Speaking of contrived, on Steve Kane's show this <laughs> afternoon, coming up right after the news, Judy Wilson of JSAC, Justice for Sexually Abused Children, will be debating Stuart Johnston, defender of Deadbeat Dads. And we're going to have uh, some sexual abuse right here in the studio in the middle of the show. So listen for that. <laughs> have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow morning from 10 to 2, right here on 610 WIOD.